Welcome friends, today we are going to make a real estate application using Next.js 13 because in my channel I try to use the latest technology. So, you see here we have a nav bar, then the hero section here with the left side and a right side here the image and here we have click to search. We are going to use it right now. And here I have one property here from the catalog, I have not created more. And here you see the details and here I can edit, so here let's say property one edited and let's make the image of this estate here so it's a different remember the picture in the background and here right now it's edited we are going to see the title is new and here the image is new so if i refresh the page are the data persisted they are persisted of course they are okay let me try to list the property here so here the title let's say just let's say property two the description is going to be some mock data price is going to be let's say 999 here square meters, beds, and here phone number, just some random values. And here let's say a picture of this estate here. It's going to be in Italy and it's going to be family home. So right now on list estate and if it's a success, we're going to be redirected to the details page. Okay, so right now let just the image to load. Okay, we see that it works. Let me go back here and here click to search. Minimum price is $1 and maximum price is $1,000. Then I want to pick a family home and then I want to pick here Italy. So right now let's let me see in here when I click on it, we know come on, we know that it works. So guys, see you in development. Welcome again, friends. Let's start developing. So the first part of installing our Next.js application is to have this line of code, copy it, and we paste it in the terminal. So copy, paste, and click enter, and our Next.js will be installed. And here, while it's before it's installing here, we are going to get, of course, a few questions. So here, what is your project named? We can name it whatever you want. So here, real estate app. Then, would you like to use TypeScript? I'm not going to use TypeScript in this project. Yes, ESLint. I don't want to use Tailwind. Yes, yes. Would you like to customize the default in Portillas? No. And it will be installed here in several seconds. And as you see, it has been installed successfully. So let's cd into our real estate app. So to our folder here, I'm going to spread it here so you see what's inside. And let us install our dependencies that we're going to use for this project. So here, npm i bcrypt, then cloudinary, then we're going to install json web token. And while I'm writing them, after that, I'm going to explain each one of them. Then mongoose, next alt. After next sort query string, uh, and uh, we have React icons, React Toastify, come on, React Toastify, and lastly, we're going to have time ago .js. So I'm going to explain them right now one by one. Bcrypt is used for hashing our password. So when you want to save a password in the database, you don't want to save it, let's say, if the password is one, two, three, four, five, six, you don't want to save it just like this, like one, two, three, four, five, six. You want to encrypt it and then save it in the database. It's much more secure this way. Then Cloudinary is going to be used for image uploading, nothing else. JSON Web Token is used for authorizing and authentication. So when a user logs in, you are going to give him back a JSON web token. And this is basically of saying, okay, you are locked in, okay, you are this person and you have these permissions. Then Mongoose is going to be used for our database. So this is how we're going to connect to our MongoDB and going to make queries to our database. Next node is basically for authentication in our Next.js application. You're going to see later how it works. Query strings is used for parsing some data, objects, JSON, and those kind of stuff. React icons is kind of self-explanatory. It is only and only for icons. React Toastify is used for notification. So when you do some action, let's say login, register, creating a new property, and that kind of stuff, you kind of want to notify the user that it has been a success. And we're going to use React Toastify for this. And lastly, timeago.js is a very simple package. It is only and only for formatting data. At least I'm going to use it only for this. So click enter and the packages will be installed in several seconds. So the installation of our packages was successful. Okay, let's make our folder structure. And you probably know that Next.js 13 is a little, a little bit different than the previous version. The main difference are how you write your API request and the routing. The routing is file-based. So I'm going to show you by example while we are writing the application how the routing is done. 
and don't worry routing is done in at least in my eyes i understand that very easily it's not a hard concept file based routing Okay, so here, inside the source directory, I'm going to make several other folders, one of which is going to be components. Then I'm going to make here assets. A component will be for components. It's, you know, if you have watched React videos, you know what's components. The asset is going to be for the images. Then I'm going to have a lib. The lib folder is going to contain the database connection and for the JSON web token, how to make it and how to verify it, that kind of stuff. And the last folder here inside the source directory that I want to make is models, which is basically how we're going to structure our documents with the MongoDB. Okay, so here, first I want to make the folders which are inside components. We're going to have several components for our application. So let's start. We're going to have here edit model. After the edit model, we're going to have footer. After that, we're going to have hero. Then I'm going to have here list model. After that, I'm going to have navbar, then properties, then property card, and we have two more. So here, search model, and the last is search model BTNs, which is sh short for buttons. Okay, and here I want to make right now the file structure and the folder and stuff, so we don't have to do things later. So here. Just let me close the terminal. And here, for each folder inside the components, I'm going to make here a JSX file, here RFC, and I'm going to make a CSS file. We And we are going to use modules. And here for the RFC, come on, okay. So this RFC, if you have encountered this for the first time, is basically an extension, which is ES7 React, come on, React Redux snippets, was it this? Yes, you see I have it installed. So this one with 8.7 million downloads. I use that for every single of my project and it basically saves you a lot of time instead of writing this manually. So you see, just LFC and everything pops up. Okay, and here of course we import our CSS file like this. And why we use CSS modules? I got a comment from one guy and he asked me why we do this. So here, CSS modules, I'm going to show you first the basic syntax. It's not, this is the vanilla CSS. So here, let's say we make container. But the, what is the problem? Here, I'm just going to make here the footer and I'm going to explain it even better. So here, imagine we have here container, the class name container, and here container. And we import both of them here. Where is it? Into the page.js. We can delete even the boilerplate files while I'm talking for this example. So here, let me import the edit model here and here footer. So we're going to have here container and container. And this is basically very bad because we can apply different styles for the containers here inside the footer and inside the, the edit model. And there would be unexpected behavior and styling that we don't want, we want to avoid. So while we are using CSS modules, we avoid this thing here. So if I write here classes.container, but under the hood is going to be, let's say, container underscore underscore something unique. So every single class name would be unique and we would not have any mixing of stylings. And trust me, I have encountered this and it's not pleasant. So just write with this syntax and you are going to, it's, it's a better practice. It's a very good practice to write CSS modules. So we are going to avoid some unnecessary things. Okay. Uh, just let me close this and here while we're at while we are at it, let me import here the footer. Where is it? Oh, I have not created it. Okay. So footer.module.css. So here footer.module.css. And here I'm just going to leave this class name for now. Later we're going to deal with the class names and stuff. Okay, we're ready with this part. With the footer and model, we need to do it for every single component here. And of course, you can right now skip the video and make it yourself instead of watching me do that repetitive thing. I'm going to provide timestamps for everything. So here, import classes in here from hero.module.css, then list model.jsx, RFC, and here list model.module.css. List model import classes from dot slash list model, and here we have several more to do. So here, let's make the navbar, navbar.jsx, and then navbar.module.css. And here, let me import again classes. 
I like to do this because I don't want to deal with creating files and stuff later. I want to do that for the components right now. It's my own preference. And I've seen a lot of people do it as well. So here, properties.module.css. And here, let me import it as well. Come on. Okay, we have three more left. Just let me close here the files because it's going to get, it's getting cluttered. Here, RFC again. And again, we make the property card.module.css import classes from dot slash and we have two more left so we are almost done here jsx here and here search model.module.css and here let me import it and we have one more left here it's just for the buttons here jsx come on rfc and here we make the CSS file and import. So this is the last component here. Okay, nice. The other thing that I want to do before we start our application is just apply some global stylings. Here you see how much things we have by default. So I want to delete everything, absolutely everything. And here I'm going to do first import URL. I'm going to tell you what we're going to import, of course, React Toastify slash dist slash react toast toastify dot css this is basically as i told you react toastify is a library for giving notifications to the user it's basically notification library and this is for getting the css of that library so we need to do that in order to make our react toastify work and be beautiful this is the only purpose of this import url then here asterisk box sizing border box margin zero and padding zero i just want to remove some default things because some elements in jsx have some default margin or padding and that kind of stuff i don't want anything by default i'm going to do it all myself here root and here i'm going to apply two css variables so here primary orange and here hashtag b d a f one c and here secondary orange and here it would be 90871E. This is basically instead of writing the, the color, let's say with the hex color or the RGB, this is much cleaner and easier way of doing it. And lastly, I'm going to apply here to my body a background color of black, just a black background color. Okay, we are done with the global CSS. And actually, let me start our Next.js application. So here, CD into Rio estate app npm rough run dev and here as you see it's instantaneously ready so here okay i have opened it as i see here and while it's loading i want to do another thing here so here into the layout.js we're going to have two components that will be present in every single page almost every single page so here not here but here i want to do it so here is going to be navbar and below, I want to have footer. And I want to delete this for now. Oops. So right now, okay, our stylings are applied. We have zero problem. Let me see here into our page. .js. I want to delete this because I don't need it. Here, that styles. I don't. I don't think I'm going to apply any styles here from the page. .css, so I can delete this as well. And here, I'm going to delete it. And here, these components also for the CSS module example. I'm just going to delete them and here I'm going to import. Just let me see what I need to import. So it's heroes, the hero section and the properties. Okay. And finally, let's start working on our first component. And of course, the first component we're going to work is the navbar. So here I'm going to close everything and we're going to start working with our navbar. So here I'm just going to apply it apply it from now use client and you probably wonder okay web dev manual what is this use client use so in xjs 13 every single jsx file by default is a server side rendered this means that the server renders it like okay but if we use let's say use state or we use event listeners let's say on click on on change these are things from the client and here into the navbar we're going to have such things we're going to have here state and we're going to have some on-click and stuff probably. 
So yes, we're going to click to have it, the on-click stuff. So that's why I run right now want to provide use client. So if we forgot to apply it or write it, we're going to have an error. You use things that are from the client side and it's rendered from the and it's server side rendered. So it's not a big problem. I'm going to show you how the error looks like if you encounter it yourself, but I want to write it right now. Okay, so let me start writing the structure here. So here is going to be header, the topmost element, and it's going to have here a class name of classes dot container. Then I'm going to give enough element, and here is going to be classes dot wrapper. Oops, I want to delete that slash. And here I'm going to give a link, which is from next slash link. If you write just React.js without any frameworks and stuff, you're going to install React Router DOM and use the link from here. But we use Next.js and it is here integrated into the Next.js, so we don't need to install React Router DOM. And here, the class name is going to be classes.left. And here, instead of the two property, which is present in the link from React Router DOM, we use href, just like the anchor tag. And here, I'm going to give an h2 inside, and here, it's going to be my channel name, web dev mania. Then, we are going to have a diff. So, you can, if you want to write, let's say, enough, you saw how I write it. So, this is the first, the syntax. But if I want to write a diff, I can write, the, write I can either write it like this, let's say, or because it's a diff, in by default, you can just write the dot without anything on the left of the dot. So, this is the same as writing this. This is the same, the same. So, I'm going to write it like this to show you that it works. And you see here, the div pops up, it's by default the div here. So here I want to make some uh, dummy variable because later we're going to have authentication and the nav bar would be different depending on the user, if the user has been logged in or not. So right now I'm just going to apply, let's say, is user is logged in. Right now I'm just going to apply to false. This is just dummy variable for the UI purposes. Later we're going to make this with login and functional and everything nice. So here I'm going to make it like this, so here if come on if locked in is not equal to false we're going to have some condition here a ternary operator here so let me make that on several lines so you see better what we are going to do okay and here firstly i'm going to make here a empty react fragment inside we're going to write several things so this means that the user has been logged in. If it's not false, this means that he's logged in. I know it's kind of confusing maybe, but I have written it that way. Here, the span is going to be here, class name, classes.username. So here we don't have any username because we are not logged in. So here I'm just going to write my name, web dev mania. Then below that span here, I'm going to give a button and this button is going to be the logout btn. So here, classes.logout btn. And here is going to be log out. Then I'm going to have here a span with a class name of description. Right now I'm just going to close this terminal. Later we're going to see what happens. And here is going to be with the class name of list. And here is going to be for listing our module. And then I'm going to have here a variable, which is going to be a state, not a typical variable. So here show list model, set show list model. And by default, it's going to be equal to false. And of course, if it's equal to true, you know what is going to happen. We're going to show the model. But right now, I'm just going to make the condition and we're going to make the uh, model later. And here it's list model. I'm going to import it. And here I'm going to pass handle height list model, which is a function which is basically for hiding the model. So right now we can make the function. Here const handle height list model is going to do this thing here. So shit set show list model is going to be previous, is going to be false. This means that it's going to hide it. And of course, when we have something to hide, we need to first make it to show. So here handle show list model is going to be like this. Set show list model. And here previous is going to be here set to true. We have both of those functions ready. Okay, this is when the user is logged in. This, I'm just even going to make a comment. So, if the user is logged in, without the exclamation mark, not needed. And here, I'm going to make the other condition. So here, this, here, if it's not logged in. So here, hello, guest, exclamation mark. 
And of course here I need a React fragment. So wrap it here. And below that span I'm going to have a button which is going to have the class name of login and here log in. And here below that button I'm going to have a link. And this link is going to be for register. So it's going to navigate us to a page. So here class name, classes.register. And here the href is going to be to slash register. And here I'm going to apply here on click and I'm going to use that function here which is sign in. We don't see that right now. Whoops. Sign in. I'm going to import it. This is from next out. So here import sign in from next out and slash react. Just I want to have the CSS here at the bottom. And of course, we do it like this. We call the function when it's clicked. And here, I want to copy it. Why? Because when you have sign in, we're going to have sign out. So it basically here, sign out. And here, let me see if it's out imported. It is indeed out imported. And in order to make uh, the next out work, we need to do one thing here. And here, just let me see. Oh, yes, it's in the, uh, the layout. So here into the app, layout.js. And here I'm going to wrap it. So here provider. I'm going to wrap everything with that provider. In that provider, we're going to get it here from a file which is here inside the source folder. So here you see the source folder, session provider.js. And I'm going to write it right now. So here it's a use client. And here import session provider, this thing here exactly. And here const provider is going to be here children session and session provider we're going to have that session here passed so guys it's a boilerplate code you don't need to understand it is basically making our application with the next all to work so we can use some hooks from the next all to get the user to to see if it's authenticated to see if it's logged in, all of that kind of stuff, and we just need to wrap our application. It's, it, is, it is under the hood React context. And here we have the children. And this children is everything which is going to wrap, so <laughs> basically our whole application. And here, of course, import default provider. And here inside the layout, I'm going to remove the last letter, add it back, and here you see it is imported. I just want to move the CSS at the bottom. It's a nice convention to have. Okay, so we're ready with this part of the application. Let me see how it looks right now it it doesn't we don't see anything why because here the background is black and by default the text color is black so we're going when we style the color we're going to see how it's going to look like okay and here we are actually ready here with the JSX so we can calmly head into the CSS so here I want to do it like this so you see what we're styling nice okay so here dot container is going to be position fixed then it's going to be top zero, left zero. This means that our navbar will not is going to stay at the same exact place. Even though we scroll down, the navbar is going to be present on the top wherever we are at, where, wherever we are at the application. Height 75 pixel with 100 percent background color is going to be black as well. And Z index is going to be 9999. So four nines. And bottom bottom is going to be half a pixel solid var primary orange. So right now, can we see how it looks? Let me see if I have some errors. I don't have any errors. It's, we're going to see. I'm sure we're going to see the styles just in a second. We just need to write some other things. Height is 100%. Width is 85%. Margin is zero auto. Display of flex justify content space between. So if you if you don't know what justify space between, it's basically going to, oops, uh, here is going to move those sides on the opposite directions. That's why the left is going to be on the left side and the right is going to be on the right side. It's going to push them on the opposite sides. And here, align item center. Just let me again spread them. Then a wrapper dot left is going to be text decoration of none. The difference, I just want to show the difference between those two selectors. This means the direct children. So. Right now, if that was with a class name of left hypothetically, and I start from the wrapper, it's not a direct children. The link is a direct children of the nav, not the h2. So this means a direct children. 
if you write it like this, this means wherever it is, the, you don't care how deep is it, just style it. But I prefer to style it like that. It's a cleaner way. Okay, just let me remove that class in here. This was just an example here. Then, dot wrapper, dot left, and then the H2. This is how we can do it. It's going to be with a font size of 32 pixel and a color of primary orange. Just like this here. Let me refresh the page. And I wonder why I don't see it. Let me see if I have imported it. Yes, I have imported it. Let me see here the terminal. I have no errors. Just let me open here. I want to see the elements here which are inside. I'm going to check it right now. Guys, after some debugging, I found a problem. It just go here to the layout and just comment it for now. Not remove it, but comment it. You can remove it just for now. We're going to do it later. Just comment it for now into the layout.js here. Here, just comment it, and as you see here, it pops up, and here, just let me revert back my uh, color here, here to a black background color. So right now, you see how it's looking. Okay, just let me remove all of those files here, and let me go again to navbar.js, and again, do it like this here. Nice. Okay, let's continue here. So after the H2 starting, just let me do it like this, okay? And here we do dot wrapper. <laughs> what I have written here, dot wrapper. And here we target the right side. And for the right side, a display of flex. So you can write a DF here instead of display flex. The the just write DF display of flex. Instead of writing a line item center, you can do just AIC, a line item center. And this is a shortcut for almost every single here CSS styling. So you can do it, let's say gap one RM and you do it like this. So it saves you so much time. So when I discovered this, I got so much relief here because I know I can write CSS either with such an ease. Then we target here the span and instead of write font size like this, we can write FZ, oops, not two pixels, but twin pixel. Then dot wrapper, here dot wrapper, we target here dot write and here, the login btn so here it's cursor pointer margin left of 1.5 rm padding of 0 0.5 on top and bottom and one on left and right background color is going to be here var and here primary primary orange then color is going to be here ef 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 it's a white color but a little bit to the grayish but it's still a white color a border none not orange but none Outline is still going to be none. Font size of 18 pixel. And border radius is going to be 8 pixels. So let me see right now how it's looking. You see how our button is looking right now. Then we're going to target our register button. So here you can copy this just to save some time. And here instead of login, it's register. And let me scroll down here just so you see what I'm doing exactly. Like this here. You can even spread it on several lines. Nice. Here for the register, I'm going to apply border one pixel solid in here, our primary orange. So you see how easy it is with CSS variables. It saves you so much time and you it's so much time with thinking what color you should implement, what was the color and all of this stuff. It's much cleaner and it's much cleaner and is a way of doing CSS. Then outline is going to be here none. After that, padding is going to be 0 0.5 on top and bottom and 1.25 on left and right. Then margin left of 0 0.5 IRM. Background color is going to be transparent. So whatever is the background color below the register, that is going to be applied. Color here is going to be primary orange as well. And then border radius is going to be 8 pixel as well. And lastly here, I'm going to style the list here, which is that span. So here, dot list. Just let me remove the highlighting here. And it's going to be again cursor pointer because it's a clickable and we have an action when you click it in here. Color is going to be again primary orange. So right now you see how it's looking? Oh, here of course I need to do something to the register. So I want to remove the text, the text decoration to be none. And here, oh my god, I was looking to the wrong to the wrong styling. So here, instead of register here, it is a logout BTN. This is for the logout BTN. And here for the register, sorry guys, so here those stylings that I've applied to the register, just switch them back to the logout BTN. 
and here right now we're going to write the register that's why the register was looking kind of weird so here dot right in here dot log out uh, dot register again this time is going to be cursor pointer then takes the equation instant font weight is going to be both background color is going to be transparent then color is going to be primary orange after that border none outline is going to be none and font size of 18 pixel so here all the stylings and you see right now how it's looking it looks as i wanted it to look and here if i switch is locked into true i want to see what i'm going to see here so here we see the logout and the list and here to the logout i can apply here the cursor pointer because it's still something that will that we can click and there's uh, action after we click something will happen so it's better to have it here nice and here this is for the css right now i'm going to close it and here i want to apply some of the functions that they have written here so uh, i want to apply this handle show list model to the list span here so here on click and here we're going to show it when we click it what else do we have to do here i am looking at my code i think for now we are ready i can just do one thing here so here if pages dot oops come on so if page dot includes login or the page dot includes is going to be register we're going to return no i think can even do it like this nice so this means that our nav bar will be shown on every single page regardless of the page except the login and the register and this page variable doesn't come out of my mind just like this i'm going to show you how we're going to get it so here const page is equal to use path to use path name here and this path name is from next navigation so here import path name from next navigation like this here nice and here it's not a function how it's not a function that's a very interesting thing ah because here it's not a default export whoops uh it's not a default export it's like this here inside the curly braces so right now it's going to work you see this basically getting the page i can even cause a lock it so you see what i'm doing here i try to explain things as concisely as i can so here inspect let me see right now what is it here so right now it's a slash because we are on the home page but let's say page something just a random page here okay because that page doesn't exist that's why we get this thing here oops so right now i can make a page i just want to show you how it's working so here let's say that i'm making the register page and here every single page right now i'm going to explain the file based writing file based writing so here if you want to make a page in your next js application this is for 13 version 13.4 right now i'm writing with this version you need to make it inside the app directory and here you make the page name inside the folder and here you must then i i repeat you must write here the page.jsx you cannot write register.jsx or something.jsx it must be page.jsx here rfc and here of course i want to name it as a register that's my personal opinion and here let's say slash register and right now you see here from the navbar 14 line it's slash register and let me see what's the 14 line this is the exact page that we use so here if it includes page or login we don't return the navbar and you probably see here that the navbar is no longer here nice that's what i wanted to show you and i can just remove this console log and this is better if i move it at the top here like this so we are ready with this part of the application nice and here for the register while we're at it i'm just going to make the css folder and i'm just going to import it right now i'm not going to write the register i first want to make the user interface and then we're going to head into all of the functionality so just here let me close them and here you see here inside the app register and here page.jsx okay uh the next part of the, our application is going to be the hero.jsx here so let's let me start writing here the hero so for the hero again i'm starting with my convention which is classes.container and then i'm going to type classes.wrapper and inside here i'm going to have here a left side and you know when you have a left side you kind of intuitively think that there's a right side and you are right we are going to have a right side as well so i can even just copy paste 
this div here and just rename it here at the right. But let me first start with the left side and then we are going to head into the right side. Here I'm just going to make a comment, just a picture on the right side. Okay. And here for the left side, I'm going to have an h2 with the classes dot main title. And here inside the h2, I'm going to have here browse through all our list of properties. Then I'm going to give here an h5 with the classes dot secondary title. And here I'm going to give we offer a wide variety of houses and apartments like this. Then below it, oh, here I forgot to write one diff. So sorry, guys, here it should be titles and it's going to wrap to uh, wrap those two h2 those two titles which is the h2 and the h5 so here just make a titles div here for wrapping the titles then i'm going to have here a paragraph with the class name of description and inside we have the following text so from viewers in italy to apartments in norway we've got you covered and here a br tag and below getting an estate has never been smoother and i'm going to use estates and property interchangeably so if you wonder oh it's a state or it's a property guys i'm going to use them like it's the same word uh then below that paragraph here i'm going to have classes dot results and below i'm going to have classes dot result and here we have a span with the text of over 5000 properties and below i'm going to have here ai view home which is an icon from react icons with the size of 20 so let me import it and i'm going to show you right now how it's done so just a typical import import from react icons and here do you see here that ai here we need to write a slash ai this is for every single icon it, if it was let's say bf or bi let's say if it was a bi here it must be a bi i repeat it's a must but here it's an ai so right now here it's an ai then below this, I'm, I can, I'm not going to copy paste actually. So here below this, I'm going to have again a result with a span with the text of over 2000 customers. And below I'm going to have here BS few person few with the size of 20 pixel. And let me import again that icon here. So from React icons BS, just like this here. And uh, oh, there it was because it wasn't imported right now. It's imported. And then I have classes.result again, the last result here. And it is with a span with over five types of estates or properties. And here, ti, tick with the size of 20. So again, I need to import that icon here from React icons ti, just like this here. Then below that results here so if you if you are like lost here in all of the levels of deepness depth here in our jsx you can just do it like this so here and here dot wrapper search and inside the search here i'm going to have a button with a class name here of search btn and here i'm going to have an on click which is going to be handle show model and here is going to be click to search and here below that button show model if that is equal to true we're going to display the model so here the search model the component that we have created and is going to have one uh, prop here passed inside it so here it's handle height model which we are going to create just now and here handle height model nice and here for the image just let me remove the text in here image is going to be from next image and here source is going to be state one which is going to be 500 and height is going to be here 700 just like this it's you don't need to write pixel you just need to write 700 the next js understands that it's pixels you don't need to specify it explicitly okay and before getting my picture i just want to make here the those functions in the state for hiding the model so here it's just super simple show show model set show model 
by default I set it to false. Then I'm going to have two functions. Oops, hand, handle show model, and it's going to be equal to set show model previous to true. I just want to like to write like this. Of course, you can write like this, it's not a problem, but I prefer to write like this because it's a safer way. Then handle hide model, and here is going to be set show model is going to be here previous set to false. And here you see you, we use you state. So here it's a must here that we need to do it with a use client. And sorry for the microphone I touched with my hands. Uh, so this is done. And the next part is to, of course, getting the images. So I'm going to go to my GitHub and I'm going to get the images. So here I'm inside my GitHub and inside my project, the exact project. So I'm, of course, going to paste the description of my project. I do it in every single video. And here, how to get the images. Here I'm going to show how I do it. Source, assets, I copy the URL and I go to this website here, which was GitHub, download GitHub directory. And here you can paste it, click enter, and you're going to download it. So here, zipping files, and here, save. And that's how you do it. And then I'm going to move it to my project here, to my folder here. Okay, so here are the images, here in the assets, and let me import the image. So here, import, state one, state one from dot dot slash, dot dot slash, assets slash state one dot jpg. So right now you see the image how it's looking and we don't see the text because the background is black and the text are by default black. We're going to do that right now. It's going to look amazing. Okay, so we are ready here with the JSX. So the next part, of course, is to go to the CSS. Here, let me open the CSS style, the styling sheets. And here, let's start styling. So here, dot container is going to be height is going to be calc 100 pH minus 75 pixel. Right now, you wonder, how did I get that random 75 pixel? It is because of the height of, of our navbar. I'm going to show you even. 75 pixels, navbar.modul.css, 75 pixel. So you get the point. Then, which is 100%. Just let me here close it. The wrapper is going to be 100%. The width is going to be 8%. The margin is going to be here, 0 auto. Then margin top is going to be 10 IRM. Display of flex and justify content of space between then dot left is going to be here display of flex and flex direction is going to be column and you see how fast i write css this is because of all the shortcuts and they you can you will learn them let's say in 30 minutes because you're going to write the same styles let's say margin or display of display flex justify content something you're going to write them a lot and you're going to learn them very very fast trust me then uh dot left and here the titles are going to be Display of flex, flex direction is going to be column, and gap is going to be two IRM just to have some distance from the titles. Some gap is more the more correct word. Okay, then the main title is going to have a color of primary orange and font size of 42 pixel is going to be quite big, I know. Then secondary title is going to be here with the color of secondary orange. And the font size is going to be smaller, 20 pixel. So right now, you see how it's looking. But of course, we still have a long way to go for a styling. Then, dot description is going to be margin top of 7.5 pixel. Color is going to be white. Font size of 30, 23 pixel, not 30, but 23 pixel. And line height is going to be 32 pixel. Then, search, B, search BTN, so the search button. Is going to be a cursor of pointer then border is going to be none the outline is going to be none margin top of 5 irm and background color is going to be one primary orange then the color is white the padding is 0 0.75 on top and bottom and 1.5 on left and right font size is 20 pixel and border radius is 8 pixel then results is going to be margin top of 7.5 on top and bottom and here zero on left and right then display of flex gap is going to be 3 irm core is 888 8, 8, and font size of 18 pixel let me see right now how it's looking okay we're getting closer and closer to our final look of the hero component 
but we still need to start a little bit more. So here dot results in the result here is going to be font weight of both. Then display of flex or DF display of flex. Align item center AIC and gap of 0.5 IRM just like this here. Then dot right is going to have a width of 700, uh, 600, not 700, 600 pixel and height of 700 pixel. And then dot right and the image inside is going to have a width of 100%, height of 100%, object fit of cover. So right now you see how it's looking. And here uh, I'm not sure why they are not moved like this here. So the results, we don't have here margin top. I want to check here what is the matter. So here results, results. I'm going to check it just now in here for the button, search button. Here I have applied the signings. I'm going to see right now why it's not applied. Instantaneously, I found a mistake. <laughs> you cannot write margin top and here have two values. It's a margin, just a margin. So right now, whoops, you are going to see. Right now it's looking as I wanted it to look. So a hero section looks great. The next part is going to make here the properties inside. Of course, we're going to make it first the UI and then we're going to head into the other stuff. So here, I want to close the hero module and JSX. And I want to go here to the app and here page.jsx here is that properties. And here I want to get some dummy values here. So right now I'm going to show you how we are going to get those dummy values. So again, we are in our GitHub repo of the project. And here you see here the properties and here I have properties data.js. Here I'm just going to copy it and explain it just for several seconds what it what is it? Because it's super easy. It just mocked data with the properties that we're going to have later in our database. But right now, this is just, as I said, a mocked data, nothing special, mocked data. So here it's inside the properties. So here inside properties, I'm going to make here properties data.js and here just copy paste here. The properties is basically an array of objects with the things that we want to have for our application. Okay, and here I'm going to pass them here. So here properties, properties data, come on, properties data from here. And we're going to get it here as a prop. So here, oops, what is it here? Come on. Properties, yes, exactly like this here. And right now let's go to our JSX. I mean, we are already at our JSX. Let's start typing the JSX, I meant. So here, class name is going to be classes.container, then classes.wrapper, then classes.titles, and inside again, I'm going to have here an h2 with the class name of main title, here most viewed properties, here h5 with the class name of classes.secondary title, and here check them out. Then below that, I'm below this classes. So here below that h5 and below that div, I'm going to have here class name of property container. And here, if the properties question mark dot length is more than zero, then of course we're going to display it. Otherwise here, I want to have an h2, which says no properties listed. And here, in the condition, this means that if we have more than one property, one or more I meant, here I'm going to make properties dot map, and here property, here instant return with the parentheses, and here I'm going to write property cut, and here we're going to pass several props. So here it's key dot property ID, and I want to make here to do in our DB, the ID is going to be like this with a slash on the left. Then I'm going to have here a property and here I'm going to pass the property. So right now I want to write here the JSX and then we're going to get into the property cut. Uh, I want to write the CSS I meant, not the JSX. We have already written the JSX for this component here. So here dot container is going to be with a height of calc 100 bh minus 6 pixel, then width of 100%. Then dot wrapper is going to be height of 100%, width of 80%, margin of zero auto, 
and spell flex, flex direction is going to be column. Then dot titles is going to be here margin left with minus, you heard me right, margin left with minus 1.25 RM. Then spell flex, flex direction is going to be column and gap of 1.5 RM. Then dot titles in here, main title is going to be here, color, the primary orange. And font size here 30, 36 pixel. Then dot titles in here, dot secondary title is going to be here, color, the secondary orange. And here font size of 24 pixel. And then the property container is going to receive here, margin top of 5 RM spaced out, display of grid because we're going to use the grid layout grid tap and columns will be repeat three so we're going to have three columns we cannot have we cannot have more than three columns on a single row and here row gap is going to be five rm so right now just let me get here into and we don't see anything i mean we see this but we don't see you know we don't see the property card with the images and stuff we just see the text inside okay so the next part of our application is to write the property card so let's go here, I want to get the property from the props. Pro, come on, property. And here, class name is going to be classes.container. And just let me close here. Then classes.wrapper. And here, I'm going to have image container. And of course, I need to do it here with inside the curly braces. Classes.image container. And here, it will be the image here. So let me type it. And it's going to be imported here, like this. Here, source property question mark dot image then width of 350 pixel and height of 300 pixel below that i'm going to have here a span with the classes dot property category and here we are going to have here property question mark dot type right now the question mark dot the and then the property it's not needed here, I mean the property of the object because you know it's confusing here. Property and here the property of the object. So this here question mark right now is not necessary, but when we get the data from API and stuff, I want to have it because we're going to have some error and stuff. Just write it, it doesn't change anything. Just write here the question mark. Then uh, below that span, I'm going to have here classes.property data. And below it, I'm just going to have here the h5 with the property question mark dot title. So right now here we see the image and what is the problem here? Let me see the mocked data. It's ah, it's image like this. I'm just going to name it here with the image just like this. So click control D and then it's going to be everything selected. You see here we have changed it for everything. Okay, and I'm on Windows just to say it. If you are on Mac, maybe it's going to be different. I'm not sure. So here we see the image and here we see the text, but of course we need to style it because it's, it's a, with a black a background color, we cannot see the text. Okay, let me go here to the styling sheets and let me start styling it. So here I want to split my screen again, so you see what I'm doing exactly. And here, dot container of 400 pixel height, width is 350 pixel, text decoration is none. Then dot wrapper is going to be here, height of 100% and width of 100%. Then dot image container is going to be here position relative then height of 100% width of 100% overflow of hidden and border radius of 8 pixel then image container and here image inside is going to be a cursor pointer because it's a clickable it's going to be clickable here height of 75 pixel width of 100% and object fit of color so right now we're going to see how it's looking why oh, it's so small Ah. ah, it's 75%, not 75 pixel. Here, it changes to a percentage, not to a pixel value. Okay, right now it looks as I want it to look. Nice. Okay, then we continue here. And then I want to target the property, the image container in here. The property category is going to be a position of absolute. Top is going to be zero. White space, no wrap. Then background color of var, secondary, orange, color is going to be white, panic of 0 0.5 RM, and on top and, bo top and bottom 0 0.5 RM, and left and right 1 RM, font size of 18 pixel, border, bottom, 
right radius is going to be 8 pixels. So only one of the four angles is going to have the border area applied. I'm going to show you how it looks. In here, property data, the H5 is going to be a color of primary orange, font size of 20 pixel, margin top of 0.5 IRM and margin left of 0.5 ARM. So we are ready here with the CSS of the property card module. So right now you see how it's looking. And here, why I don't see that property category where exactly it is here. I'm missing something. Wait. Guys, so you see how it pops up here. I just forgot to write here the last property to zero. Just add this here and you see how it looks. It looks amazing. Nice. So we are ready here with the UI of the property. Let's see what next should we have here. Here, as you see, we need to run, we need to do that click to search. And when we click it, I want the model to pop up. So let's go into here our search model here. Oops, just let me here close all of those files, all of those files, and let us let us start writing here. So as you remember here, it is into the hero section. So you see here how where is it here? And here we pass this function here. So I'm just going to copy here the name of the function and here paste it. We are going to accept just this thing here. And let me start writing here the JSX. So here I'm going to have here class name is going to be here equal to classes.container. Then I'm going to have classes.wrapper. Then here I'm going to have the uh, variable, I mean uh, state, which is going to be, oops, come on, is going to be with the default value of zero. We're going to have three steps and I'm going to show you what those steps represent. So here, if step is equal to one, we're going to display the first step and I'm just going to copy paste it for the other steps. So here like this, two and three. And for the first one, I'm going to have here classes dot step underscore one. And you probably guess what's going to happen for the others. Here is going to be classes dot step underscore two. And the same is going to be for the, the third step. And here it's three, not two. Here classes dot step underscore three. So right now you see how it's going to look like. We're going to display only one of the steps at a time and we're going to navigate through them. So the first part is the first step, of course, let's just start with it. So it's going to be here with an H2 with the class name of title and it's going to be pick your desired price. Then below the H2, I'm going to have classes, a diff with the class name of inputs container so it's a plural, we're going to have two inputs inside. And here I'm going to have a diff with the class name of input wrapper. So I'm going to show you why we do it like this. Here inside the input wrapper, I want to have the label, which is mean price, short for minimum price. And here I want to connect the input field with the label. So this is done with an HTML4 in the label and an ID into the input. So here it's mean price. And below it, I'm going to have here the input it's a type of a number, of course. It has an ID here of mean price. Then uh, it's going to have a value of mean price. Then it's going to have a mean of mean underscore price. And then on change is going to be here set mean price to e dot target dot value. And when something comes that long, I always spread it on several lines because it's going to be much, much more readable. Like this. And you see what we have here inside our input. And I'm going to uh, get that value and make the state. Just in a second, I just want to write the second input field. And here, the input wrapper is just a wrapper for the label and the input. So we can calmly copy it. Or actually, I don't want to copy paste it because I know when I watch a video, what's the feeling of constantly copy pasting. So I'm going to write it by hand. Okay, and here it's going to be a label. And here, max price. Here, let me make it uppercase just to make it more beautiful. And here, HTML4 is going to be max price. Below that, we are going to have the input field. And I'm just going to copy the input field because it's basically the same. But here, it's max price. The type is still a number, the value is max price, the minimum is going to be, we're not going to have a minimum, but we're going to have a maximum. Actually, we don't need any value here. It's going to be just minimum, min price. That's what I'm going to do here. 
we need this here. Let me copy paste it. And here on change is going to be set max price. This is it. And let me make here the state just to track them. So here I'm going to have cost min price. Set min price is going to be equal to U state and the default value is no. Then const max price, set max price is going to again with a U state of no value. Then const type set type is going to be equal to U state is going to be here zero. Then const country set country is going to be equal to U state again to zero. I'm going to show you how we're going to do it. And also before the second step and the third step. Third step. So it's a little bit of a spoiler. <laughs> You're going to see it just in a second. Then router, I want to have some navigations and stuff. So here router is going to be from, and here when it's imported here, it's from next slash router, but do it from next navigation because we're going to get an error. I've encountered this several times. Do next slash navigation, trust me. Here, I have other functions to declare, but right now I just want to do other stuff. So to, to uh, write here the JSX and here I want to import this thing here. So the min price and the max price, I want to make here a folder, which is search model data dot js here and i'm going to write it myself because it's not that hard so here const min price is equal to zero const max price is equal to i'm going to pick to so it's a one thousand ten thousand hundred thousand a million ten million hundred million so Oops, here it's lowercase. So the max price is 1 million. So here my bot here changed to a max price. I don't want a, uh, a apartment or a house to be over 100 million. I, I'm not sure if there's such an estate. Probably there is it. But in our application, over 100 million, I don't want to allow. <laughs> I mean, it's so much. Okay, and here I just, I'm going to export them. Oops, not like this here. So export min price max price. And here I want to have, you see here I declared the type and the country. I want to, to have some types and the country and I'm going to just copy them from my GitHub because it's basically some types and the country. I mean, we, it's not, it's a dummy data. It's literally a dummy data. So here, let me just import the min and the max price. And here it's max underscore price. Sorry. So here it's max and then max price. Here it's minimum and minimum price. Sorry if you get confused, guys. It happens in a big project. Uh, okay, and again, I want to go to my GitHub to copy. I'm going to show you what I want to copy. As I said, I really hate copy and pasting, but this is a mock data and you're going to see it's literally this here. Just let me copy paste it and I'm going to show you what it is. What is it? This is basically the types. I'm going to have five types here. Just some random types, party viewer, family home, seaside house, mountain viewer, and a penthouse. Of course, there are more types in the real world, but for our application, just I chose five. And here, the countries that are that you if you are from those countries or the con if you are from those countries or the states from your country then you can place it i've just made it like this i did not want to type 200 countries just let's say how many countries here one two three four five six seven eight nine ten so here 10 countries so i did not want to as i said to type 200 countries okay so here this is for the step one i'm just going to make it like this to not clutter our uh, vs code and let's continue here Okay, and here I'm going to have an H2 with a class name of classes.title and here it's a pick a type. And here the div is going to be here select container and here the select like this and it's going to be with a class name here of classes.type. On change is going to be here like this so set type e dot target dot value and of course here with the previous and the arrow and here the value is going to be the default type then i'm going to have some options here and we're going to make that options like this so here types come on types i want to be to get this thing imported i need to write it here so types and countries types dot map type and here I want to have here option and here is going to be value is going to be 
just we can take that type because every single type is unique. And then the key is going to be type as well. I mean, for the key, it's type. For the value, of course, we're going to use the type here. Oh, no, for the value, we're going to use an index. Again, my bad, I have made it like this intentionally. I'm going to tell you later why. And here, we're going to have the type. So this is how we're going to do it. And here for the step tree, it's going to be here on h2 with the class name of title and here pick a country. Then I'm going to again to have a div with a class name of select container. And here it's again select with the class name here of country. Oops, I don't want this here. And sorry guys, if you don't see your country, as I said, I just didn't want to type 200 countries, it's too much. I have just written some random countries that came out of my mind, as you see here, from, from, from a lot of continents here. Greece, Norway, India, Italy, Portugal, Bulgaria, Indonesia, Japan, Nigeria, and Brazil. Okay, let me continue here. So here, I'm going to apply here the on change, and here, previous is going to be here, e.target dot value and then the value is going to be here country and then countries dot map it's country here the index and here an instant return option and here i'm going to write here the value come on the value as the index and here the key is going to be we can do it with the index but i prefer to write it with the country and here country like this here and below that, so here below the last curly brace here, I want to import the search model BTNs here. And I'm going to show you what they're going to do. I'm going to pass here the step because we need the step here. Then handle back because I want to navigate through the different steps. Handle back. Come on. And then handle next. And here is going to be handle next. Nice. And here below I want to have here an AI outline close. And here I'm going to have an on click, which is going to be here, handle height model. Class name is going to be a classes dot close icon. And here size is going to be twin. Nice. And here below, I'm going to add a toast container. Nice. And this is basically for the notifications. We must have that toast container for notifications. That's why I have added it. Nice. Uh, I want to go here, refresh my page. Okay. And when I click here, handle box is not defined. Oh, yes. Well, of course, we need to write those functions. Okay. So, cons handle back is going to be equal to an arrow function. And inside, I'm going to have here, if step is equal to one, do nothing. Just return no. Literally, do nothing. We cannot go like we are on the first step. We cannot go to the before first step. There's nothing, right? And here, set step here, previous is equal previous to one. So if you're on the second or the third, no problem, we can go back. Because handle next is going to have the opposite logic. So here, if step is equal to three, here, actually, instead of returning no, we're going to run the function because, of course, we want to search. And here, then return. I can even do it like this. So here, return, just on a single one to, be, to look better. Otherwise, set step is going to be here previous and here previous plus one. Then I'm going to have the const handle search, which is going to be here. I'm going to redirect us to the page to of when you search to the page that had the filtered properties. And here, if type is equal to true, country is equal to true, mean price is equal to true, and max price is equal to, to true. And here, of course, as well, we want the max price to be more than the min price and the min, I mean, this is it. I mean, this is the condition that we want. Okay. And here, const URL is going to be quite long, so you can go to my GitHub to copy paste it. If you want, I'm going to write it by hand. So here, dot, dot not dot, but slash search. And here, question mark, we start the query. Here, type is going to be equal to type. Then country is going to be the country is going to be equal here to the come on equal sign to the country. Then mean price is going to be here equal to mean price. And here 
we're going to have max price is going to be here to the max price come on max price and here router dot push the URL and here else I want to have return notify come on notify and here fill all fields and here response type dot error and this response type dot error this is the first thing that I want to do here I want to do it on the topmost here of the component and here const response type is going to be like this so here error error success come on success is going to be here success so here we have that object and here that notify function I'm going to show you right now how we're going to do it so here notify is going to accept here two parameters a text and a response and here toast response and here text this is it and here it's not it's not with the square brackets but uh, of course parentheses so this is how it's going to work in this toast we just need to import it here actually we do we need to import it I mean I have the toast container no this is it you don't need to import anything this is it so right now we don't have the search page ready we're going to make it a little bit later but right now we have the search model and I want to show you how it looks of course it looks terribly ugly because we have not written the CSS of course let me go to the CSS and let me go it's going to look very nice I promise you so here let me go here and okay I can make it like this so here dot container is going to be a background color of RGBA 0 0 0 0.6 so it's going to have a black overlay position is going to be fixed overflow is going to be set to hidden top is going to be zero left is going to be zero height of 100 vh width of 100 vw display of flex justify content of center inter items of center dot wrapper is going to be position relative width of 20 percent height of 37.5 percent padding uh, border radius and then we're going to do a padding so border radius of 12 pixel padding of 2 RM background color is going to be white here display of flex and flex direction is going to be calm so right now uh, little by little you see what is happening but of course we still have a long way to go here for the CSS to make it look nice then dot wrapper in the title inside we're going to actually without that I have written it on my other monitor I see that I have written it without it is going to be text align of center then margin bottom of 5 IRM font size of 28 pixel and color of 333 then dot wrapper and here the, the dot step underscore one and then the dot inputs container is going to have a width of 100% display of flex gap of 3 IRM then dot wrapper the dot step underscore one the inputs container and then the input the, then the input wrapper and then the input element just like it is going to have a width of 100% panic of 0 0.5 IRM border is going to be none outline is going to be none and border bottom is going to be one pixel solid var primary orange then I want to target the input wrapper just like this here and I'm going to do it above I don't know why I have written it in my other monitor below so just above to make it better and here position is going to be relative then width of 100 percent border none and outline is going to be none so right now you see it's go, it get, it, we are getting closer and closer to our desired look then here below it I want to write here for the labels here so dot wrapper I'm going to make a very nice animation with the label you're going to like it I'm sure and here step one step underscore one Again, input container, the input wrapper. I'm going to even make it on a new line here because it's getting quite long for me. And here, the label first child. So this is the, the first label. And it's going to have a position of absolute. Then it's going to have a color of 555. Left of 0 0.5 IRM. Not minus, but just 0. Uh, bottom of 0 0.5 IRM. In transition of 250 milliseconds off. Then... I want to copy this here and here last child is going to be like this here so positioned absolute then color of 555 come on then uh, left of 0.5 IRM bottom 0.5 IRM 
and transition is going to be here of 250 milliseconds so basically the same stylings so you can just copy paste them as you see then i want to do it like this so here wrapper again I'm i want to copy this but i'm going to show uh, the difference so here we copy those uh, selectors and here instead of just label first and last child just label and then here into the input wrapper focus within i'm going to show you what this means this means that if something inside the input wrapper like an input field of the text area gets focused then we're going to apply those tannings so again i'm going to make it color of 777 then uh, left of zero right uh, bottom of 1.5 irm and font size of 12 pixel so right now you see how beautiful is that animation here you can write something let's say you can write something and i like this animation a lot of course, when it gets bugs, it's not that nice, but you see when we write here, I personally like it a lot. Okay, uh, then I'm going to give here a wrapper, and here those step underscore two, and here select container, and here display of flex, justify content of center. And if I don't forget later, we can fix this so when there's a value, it doesn't get back when it's out of focus. It's not that hard to fix. If I don't forget, I'm going to do it. Then dot wrapper and here step underscore two and select container and then the dot type is going to be width of 50%, outline is going to be none, then text align is going to be center, font size of 18 pixel, panic of 0.5 RM, and background color is var, var slash slash, I mean uh, dash dash, primary orange, then the color is going to be white and border radius of going to be 8 pixel then we go to the third step and i'm going to actually try to fix it don't worry uh, then dot wrapper the step underscore three and then the select container is going to be here display of flex justify content center then dot wrapper the step underscore three and then the select container and then the country is going to be width of 50 percent outline is going to be none then text align is going to be center font size of 18 pixel panic of 0.5 rm background color is going to be var here slash slash primary orange just let me scroll down color is going to be white and font uh, border radius is going to be 8 pixel and lastly i want to have the close icon cursor of pointer position is absolute top of 12 pixel and right is going to be 6 pixel so right now it's positioned just like this here nice and then of course we're going to make the buttons just in a second i just want to fix this here and i wonder how it's going to be appropriate to fix it i have an idea so here i want to have a class name which is going to be dynamic so if is focused i'm going to make it uh, the how i want to name this here i wonder I'm going to do it just now. Guys, actually, instead of trying to do this thing, it's much easier here. The only thing that I've changed during the time that I stopped recording is instead of making, here I'm going to make a comment, instead of bottom to be 0 0.5 IRM, I made the bottom to be 1.5 IRM. And here, when it's focused, I'm going to show you from bottom 1.5 because that was the previous value. And right now it's bottom to IRM. So it's a little bit up oops as you see here and when i focus you see how it is it's much better and i don't want to lose time fixing some styling so it's still working and still looking nice great so as you see here we need to make the search bottle btn so let me go here to my file so here search model btn where is it and let's start typing here the code so here of course you know my convention i'm going to make here class name classes.container then Classes dot wrapper. Here we have props as well. So here let's accept the step, handle back, and handle next. And then I'm going to make some variables here, just a variable and a function. So here is first step is is equal to step, come on, equal to step equal equal equal, so triple equal to one. 
then comes next button label because we're going to change wins on the last step instead of next is going to be search. So right now we are going to see this step. When step is not equal to three, this means that we're not on the final step. This means return next. This is just going to be the text. But if step is equal to three, we are going to return search like that. And here inside, I'm going to have a button which is going to have a class name and some other stuff. So here class name is going to be classes.backbtn. Then on click is going to be handle back. And here disabled is going to be disabled when it's the first step because we cannot back when we are on the first step. It doesn't make sense. And um, I'm going to make it use client because we are using on click here and we, we don't we cannot use events without making our file uh, you uh, use client and here we're going to make it back as well then here button like this and it's going to be the next btn so here class name is going to be classes dot next btn and then on click is going to be here handle next and here for the text i'm just going to copy this function and paste it like this nice let me see right now how they're looking before we style them oops okay so here you see how are they looking they need some styling so let me go here to the styling sheets let me again split the screen and let's go here dot container width of 100 percent dot wrapper is going to be here width of 100 percent margin top of 7.5 irm display of legs justify content of space between and align item center then dot back btn is going to be cursor pointer then outline is going to be none then background color is going to be transparent color var is going to be here secondary orange then border is going to be one pixel solid primary orange after that border radius is going to be here eight pixel and padding of 0 0.5 rm on top and bottom and 1.25 on left and right dot back btn and here disabled is going to be cursor not allowed border color of 555 so a green color color is 555 here again just the text color and opacity will be 0 0.5 so it's very obvious when you cannot click on it then next btn is going to have cursor pointer outline none then border none then margin left of auto background color is going to be here primary orange color is going to be white bar radius is going to be 8 pixel and padding is going to be 0 0.5 on top and bottom and 0 0.25 on left and right so this is for css here and you obviously see that you cannot click on it but when i click on next you see it's different oops country is not defined i have not imported it nice let me import it where it is the last step countries okay right now it's imported okay so here i click next and here you see and then when you search we are going to be redirected to the page of course we have an error because ah this is not defined haven't i imported it or i told that i didn't need to import it wait i'm just going to see what's the matter with that toast here import toast container and then the toast function okay let me choose something here party viewer here and let's say this country here and right now you see how the area is looking okay but it is doing as, as we wanted to do why because we have not created that page so we know it's working we just need to create the search page but i'm going to create the search page once we make the api to create some listings of the properties then i'm going to make the search functionality right now we've made the model successfully and it successfully redirected, redirected us to the page with the right url and all of that stuff but as i told you filtering and all of the stuff is going to be made after we have the functionality to list properties the next thing that i want to do is here make the details page so here let me create a new page here into the app details here i'm going to make another fi file a folder i mean i meant which is for the id and then page.jsx so in this way you see how the details and then id 
this means that the page is going to look the following way. So here details, slash, and then whatever it is after the slash. But it must have something after the details and the slash. Okay. Let me just do it like this and uh, where it is the property card here. So I want to make the image container a link here. So it's a link and it's going to have the href here, the following href. So slash details slash property dot id. I'm going to make here a comment to do here to do change it to id after we make the API and the listing functionality. Nice. So right now when I click here, ah, I'm going to, to fix just the stylings right now. It's text decoration none. This is for the image container and I want to make it display block. Okay, right now it works. So just to the image container inside the property card, add display block and position relative. Uh, not position relative, but display block and text decoration none. This is just this one. Okay, and right now when I click on it, you see how I redirected here to the details and one. And right now we are going to work with dummy data, but then of course everything would be dynamic with an API. So here I'm going to make the page called details and let me start typing the code here inside. So here I want to get here a router. We are going to need it later, but I just want to get it from now. Here, as I told you, it should be navigate. It must be navigation. It's not a should, but a must. And then const id is equal to ctx.params.id. Here we get the ctx. It is provided by default here from the next. And let me see here property. Okay, right now I'm going to make here that property state. Come on, const property set property is equal to use state an empty string. And then I'm going to make a use effect here which is going to get that property. So here, const fetch property. Right now, we don't have a server. That's why I'm writing it like this. So the property would be fetched the following way. So here, as you remember, we have the properties data. And here, from the properties data, const property, is called to properties data dot find property, or just p for short, p dot id is equal, equal to the id, like this. And here I'm going to make them both to string because I think it's not that I think I'm almost sure that here we get it as a string, but here it's a number. Just to avoid any confusion, errors, and debugging, I'm just going to make it that way. And then set property is going to be set to that property. Oops, like this. And here, of course, we call the function. And let me console log here the properties. Ah, okay, we need it as a use client. It's 100% correct. So here, use client. Here, inspect, and here we get the object, and here we get it. So here is a part of your Italy. I want to click on something else. Uh, let me click on, let's say, this here. So it's an ID of four, as it's here. So it's getting the correct here. It's country India, so it's a different country. The view is located on the beach facing the mainland and all the stuff. Even though, I mean, here, country India, title Italian viewer. I'm sorry, guys, it's just a mocked data. Then we're going to make dynamic everything as you want it to be. Uh, okay, we are ready with this part. Let's start typing here the JSX. Here, class name is going to be classes.container. Come on, I have not, ah, I have not made a CSS file. So here, details.module.css. And here, import classes from dot slash. And here, let's start. So classes.container. Then classes.wrapper, then I'm going to have image container, so here image container, and inside of course we're going to have that image here, so let me import it, here source is going to be property question mark dot image, like this, and here height is going to be 750 pixel, and width is going to be 1000 pixel, so here in a string 1000, like that, below that I'm going to have a span, which is going to be here the category. So here class name is going to be classes.category. And here property question mark dot type. Then below the image container, so below the span and the div, 
I'm going to have here classes dot property data. And here I'm going to have classes dot property section and then h2 with a class name here is going to be of a title and then property question mark dot title and here i'm going to make it is owner right now it's going to be just a variable just standing like this so here const is owner is equal to true then we're going to make it with the uh, with we are going to make it we're going to check if the JWT token is there, or the user is talking, and that kind of stuff. Right now, it's just a dummy variable. Here, of course, I make a condition. And below, then it's owner, and here I'm going to. It's just like this, so it's a two ampersand. It's not going to be with a question mark in the column, so it's like that. And here I'm going to have classes dot controls, and then I'm going to have a button which is going to have the on click is going to show me handle open edit model and here I'm going to have the following icon which is going to be BS come on BS fill pencil fill this icon and then I'm going to have of course another button but it's going to be with an on click of handle delete const I mean not const but handle delete on click handle delete and then we are going to have another icon, which is again BS, fill, trash, fill. Just like that, trash, fill. Great. And here below that div here, I'm going to have another classes.property section. We are going to have several property sections, which is here an H5 of country. And here property question mark dot country. Then I'm going to have a span with a class name here of type, so here classes.type and here property question mark dot type. Then I'm going to have here classes dot property section and here I'm going to have an H5 with the classes dot SQ meters and here SQ dot meters property question mark dot SQ meters. Then Below that, I'm going to have a span with the classes dot beds. And here, I'm going to have a property, property question mark dot beds. And here, FA bed. Come on, I don't have that icon popped up from the IntelliSense. So here, import from React icons FA. Okay, then below that span and below the div here, I'm going to give again a classes dot property section. Why it's not popping up? Okay, and here span, oops, span with the classes dot price. And inside, I'm going to give the price here colon space dollar sign and here property question mark dot price. And then I'm going to go just here, so between the Pre last and the last div, I'm going to have here a condition if show edit model is true, I'm going to show the edit model, which is a component that we have, but we, we have not written anything inside, we just have uh, created it. And then handle height edit model is going to be handle height edit model. Then property is going to be property, and here ID is going to be ID. And let me make the state here. So const show edit model set show edit model is going to be equal to false. And again, I'm going to make those functions for showing for showing and hiding. So here show handle show edit model is equal to a function which is set show edit model. Previous is going to be set to true, and then const handle height edit model is going to be a general function set show edit model previous and then post like that and I'm going to copy this here and here it's handle open okay I'm going to change it so here it's going to be handle open just change the name here instead of handle show handle open it's not that big of a deal just dynamic I'm thinking what else is are we 
wait, I want to refresh the page and see where we are at. Handle delete has its own defined. Okay, we're going to define it. So handle delete. I'm just going to declare it. We don't have the functionality yet to delete. Okay, right now everything pops up and here is the text and all the stuff. So let's us go into the CSS. So here the details.module.css and let me start styling. Just let me close this here and let's go. Okay, so dot container is going to be here. Margin top of 8.5 RM. Then height is going to be calc 100 VH minus 65 pixel. Then which is going to be 100%. Then dot wrapper is going to be here. Height of 100%. Width of 70% and then margin of zero auto. Then dot image container with a position of relative height of 70, 67%, which is two thirds, and then width of 100%. Then dot image container image is going to be height of 100%, width of 100%, and object fit of cover. So let me right now see how it is. Okay, it's looking much, much better. Then let's continue here. I'm going to target the category here. So image container and here dot category. Position up, come on, position absolute. Then I'm going to have left of zero. Then I'm going to have white space of no wrap. Then I'm going to have back color of variable here, secondary orange. Then I'm going to have color of white. Then I'm going to have padding of 0 0.75 on top and bottom and 1.5 on left and right. Then Font size of 20 pixel and border, bottom, border, bottom, right radius. And here's going to be 8 pixel. Then property data. And here we're going to do a width of 100% and padding of 1 RM. Then next is the property section. And here we're going to apply a width of 100%, margin bottom of 2.5 RM, display of X, justify content of space between to space them out and align item center. After that is the title. So the title is going to receive a margin top of one RM, a color of, it's a primary orange, not secondary. So here primary orange, then it's a font size of 30, 38 pixel. Then dot controls is going to be here, display of flex, align items of center and gap of 1.25 IRM. After that controls and here button is going to be cursor, pointer, border, none, padding of 0.5 RM, background color of green, color is going to be white, width of 50 pixel, height of 50 pixel, border radius is a 12 pixel, display of flex, justify content of space between, uh, of center, no space between, this time is center, and align items of center, I don't know what popped up here, so align items of center. We have still some styles left, so let's go. Then it's controls and we target the first button. So here button first child and it's going to have a background color of green. Whoops, just green. I'm going to copy paste this and here instead of a first change it to a last. And here instead of green, we're going to change it to a red color. So green is for editing, red is for deleting. Then dot country is going to have color of var and here primary orange and then font size of 20 pixel. 20 pixel like that. Type is going to have a cover of 666 and font size of 18 pixel. After this, we have the SQ meters, so square meters, color of primary orange, and then font size of 20 pixel. After that, dot bets is display of flex, align items of center, gap of 0.75 RM, color is again 666, and font size of 18 pixel. And lastly, here we have the price and the prices. Again, color here, it's a primary orange color. Font size of 20 pixel. And lastly, font weight of both. So, whoops, so we can see how our page is looking. It looks amazing. And here, well, I don't see the price. Let me go here to the dummy data. So here, we, I haven't written a price. Okay, we're going to write it just now. There's no problem. Here, price is going to be, let's say, one, two, three. Just, just to have a value. Okay, great, here we see it. And what else do I have here? I have written all of the JSX and here, of course, we don't have that function written because we haven't set up our API. And before I set up my API, I want to make the login. And actually with login, I'm going to set up a part of my API. So guys, let's head into our 
I'm going to show here. So here we have DAP. We're going to make an API folder. And inside the API folder, I'm going to have here five, uh, three other folders. So one is old, the next one is register, and the final one is property. And the first one that I want to touch, oops, here into the API. So here you see we have three folders, out, property, and register. The first that I want to touch is going to be the next out, which is for login. So here inside the out, you write, so look careful this syntax, it's kind of weird, I know. Dot, 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 so you have three dots and next out, next out. And inside it, you have route.js. And you remember how with pages here, we have page.jsx. In order for your route to work, you must name it as a route.js. If that is not a convention, not a preference, this is a must. API is route.js, and for pages in the client side, here as you saw, the React pages, they are, are page.jsx. So here it's a must. As I said again, it's not optional. You must write it like this here. And let's start typing it here. So import next out from next out slash, not slash, not slash next, just next out. Then import credentials provider. Why it doesn't pop up? So here import credentials provider from next out slash provider slash credentials. Then import user from model from slash model slash user. I'm just going to create the models in a second after I create this file. Import sign in, in sign JWT token, I'm going to create this function soon as well. Here from slash lips slash JWT. So this is just a user model. If you have encountered Mogul schemas, this is basically a schema. And this is for creating the JWT token. I, I want to have a separate function instead of cluttering all my file. It's better for readability. And here, bcrypt from bcrypt. And here, we import db from slash models, uh, not models, but slash lips slash db. This is basically for starting our database, our connection to the database more specifically. I'm going to create, I want to move it uh, like that just to show you. I'm going to create those three things here after I write the this file here that I mean. So don't worry, I'm going to write them. And here, cons handler is equal to next out, and here, parentheses and an object. First, it's a providers. And for providers here, I have credentials providers. Here again, parentheses and curly braces. And inside type is going to be credentials, then credentials. And here, username is going to be label email. Then type is going to be a type of a text. And here, placeholder is going to be drawn doll. Then Password is going to be here label and here password type is going to be a password just like that. Then I have a function here below that curly brace which is authorized. You see it pops up automatically. So here AU authorize, nice. And it's before writing the function, you need to write async. The syntax must be like that. And here credentials and track. You get those from the next out. If you don't understand something which if you have never encountered next out, stop my video, watch the documentation it's in next out, specifically the credentials provider, and come back to my video. It will take tens of minutes to explain it here. That's why I will explain the basics, but not go that into depth. Credentials, you get this. You remember, I'm just going to explain just on surface level. Here, do you remember inside the navbar.jsx? Do you remember here the login? So when I use sign in, I'm going to be redirected to a page. And in this page is going to be the login page. And then I'm going to write some credentials. And those are the credentials, the input fields that I have specified. And from those credentials, I'm going to get them. I'm going to restructure them right now. So username and password is equal to credentials. So we're going to get them when we send, uh, I'm going to show with the login how it works, because I need the login page as well. Then I'm going to use db.connect. That's how it works in, in Next.js. You need to connect the db like that to start the db connection. Then const user is equal to user dot find one and we search it by the email. Remember, this is a login. If we don't have a user, this means that he's not in the database. So we throw, throw new error and here the error would be invalid input. So then const compare password is going to be equal to await bcrypt dot compare and I provide the password and the user dot password. 
then if the password is not correct here throw new error it's going to be invalid input i want to use something that is not that specific of a message as an error it would be bad for security reasons to specify here invalid email and here invalid password but for security reasons that's why you it is better to not be specific that's why i, re I write invalid input it is 100 consciously that i do it then password and i get the other things here so current user is going to be equal to user dot underscore doc then const access token which is the jwt token sign jwt token and here current user and here the options expires in i'm going to provide it let's say 5d which is short for five days i just want to be for the duration of the video it is going to be a lot more from the duration of the video but you get me i want to be secure and here return i want to spread here the current user and give the access token back as well but we still have some work to do here so you see that bracket here the square bracket here we make a comma and here pages and here for signing i want to be to go to the login this means that when this functions run here you see the signing function i'm going going to be redirected to a slash login page which we're going to create just in a second and here i have callbacks and here look carefully so here callbacks here it's a key value pair again and i'm going to do have two functions the first is async jwt token user and those things that i get here is those things so if user exists which the things that we get here those two values are going to be inside the user and then token.access token is going to be equal to user.access token so here i want to set my user the things that i get from my user which is the user and the token to that token object i know it's kind of confusing with all those tokens that's why i told you go read the documentation if you don't understand it it's not that easy to explain it in a video and here user dot underscore doc and then i'm going to return the token and i'm going to give another function which is going to be async session here i'm going to show you what is going to do session and the token so when imagine that i want to, do, to make a condition here because here is locked into true i'm going to use the use session hook you see it pops up here use session hook and this use session hook is going to get whatever we're going to write here in the in the session and return it so whatever is returned here we're going to get it back and here right now i don't need it i'm going to use it just soon but right now i'm still going to set it like that and where is it i'm just going to delete the import and continue and here if the token is true so this token that we are going to get here is that thing that we return here so what we have here return here and it's here session dot user dot underscore id is going to be token dot underscore id session dot user dot access token is going to be token dot access token so this is what we're going to get back when we run the use session who that you saw here and the lastly here we export handler as get like that and handler as post this is how we do it so we are ready with that route with that route.js but i want to make those three things here the user model the sign jwt function and the connection to our database i'm going to spoil you right now the connection to database i'm going to copy paste it it's a boilerplate code i got in i got a comment on my last video why i copy paste it bro i mean it's a boilerplate code you don't need to understand it that well I'm, I'm still going to explain it a little bit but it's a boilerplate code you don't need to go into that deep of uh, rabbit hole to understand how it works it, it's just a connection and disconnection it's nothing special okay and here the user here i want to make the user.js and i'm going to make as well a property.js because i'm going to need it later uh here is that's in a model and here for the jwt here just let me see how it's called so here jwt .js and db.js oops okay here i'm going to go to my github just first i want for the database to explain it a little bit as i said i'm not going to go that into depth because it's not that important trust me it works okay right now we have the connect the connect function in each check if you have a previous connection because with next.js it's a little bit different than react and if you have a different if you have already a connection it returns because it has it knows that you have been connected previously then if the connection.length is more than zero 
then you get the first connection from the race set. You see how it works. And here, cons db, this is if, if those aren't true, you are just going to connect and set the first connection here, the first, the first index from connections array, and then the ready state. This is how it works. And here the disconnect, you see how it works. It's just await dot disconnect. Basically, as I said, this dot not going to depth. Connection, connect function is for connecting our database. Disconnect is for disconnecting our database. It's not that hard to understand. I, I, as I think, in my opinion. Okay, enough talking. Uh, this is for the DB, then for the JWT token. Let me import JWT from JSON web token. In here, export function sign JWT token. And here, payloads.options. And here, is the uh, if we don't have an option, it's just an empty object. That's that, what, what it means. Then, const secret is equal to process.env.jwt underscore secret. We're going to make env file right now. Then const token is going to be equal to jwt.sign payload.secret and then options. And then export function verify jwt token is going to be here token. And then try catch and here is going to be console.error and here is going to be error return no. So this is for signing. You probably know that function if you have encountered JWT. And then const secret is going to be process.env.jwt underscore secret. And here const payload is going to be jwt.verify token dot secret. And here return payload. And guys, I want to say one more thing. If something is confusing to you, just stop the video and read the documentation. I try to explain things concisely, but if you want to go into depth, a video which is on average four hours will take twice as much time and I don't think I'm going to get as much views because some people, I think probably half, more than half of my viewers probably know almost everything here that I write. Sorry for uh, telling you this, let's go back to the code. So we are ready with that JWT. What I have to do, ah, it is the user and the property model. Okay, here, cons mongoose is equal to require mongoose. And it's completely normal, guys, if you don't know something, just go read the documentation. I've read hundreds of hours of documentations and stuff. Here, then user schema is going to be equal to new mongoose.schema. And here, username is going to be type of a string required of true. And unique is going to be set to true. After that, I'm going to have email. And here, type is going to be string. Required is going to be true. Unique is going to be true. And I'm going to have two more here properties, which is going to be the password here. Type is going to be string. Required is going to be set to true and minimum is going to be set to six. And I'm going to have here phone number. I'm going to show you later how we're going to do it. So here type is going to be, I'm not sure if it's, a, okay, let's make it a, a number. And I'm going to have here a minimum, let's say of, I don't know, let's say eight. And then time stamps is going to be equal to true. Export default and here mongoose question mark dot models it's a lowercase so here like this and here user. This means that if we have a model, if we don't have created a model, we're going to create one. But if you already have, why do I would create? Why would we create another one? I know the syntax is a little bit different than in Node.js or React, depending on what we're writing here. It's a little bit different. You may be confused. No worries. I was confused as well at the beginning when I started to learn Next.js. Okay. Then we have the property here. So const mongoose is equal to require mongoose. And here, const property schema is equal to new mongoose.schema. And then current owner is going to be here, a type of mongoose.types.object ID. Then ref is going to be here, user. Come on. And here, it's required set to true, like that. Then. I'm going to have here a title. That schema is going to be a little bit bigger than the user one, I'm telling you right now. Then string required is going to be true. And if you don't know what is required to true and those mean, this means that we cannot create the schema without providing the title value or whatever it is. Let's say here it has a required as well. And here we have a minimum of, of six characters. So we must provide the title and it must be six or more. That's what it means. Then country is going to be here type of a string required is going to be set to true. 
then I'm going to have a description, type is going to be here string, and the required is going to be set to true. And of course, as a description, I'm going to have a minimum of, let's say, 25. I want some concise description, uh, not concise, but a little bit longer. It's, it, I mean, 25 characters is not that long, but you get the point. I want some limitations. Then type is going to be string, and required is going to be set as well true. Then price is a type of a number, and again, required is going to be set to true. Then I have SQ meters, which is a type of a number, and then required is going to be set to true, and minimum of 15. So, I mean, the uh, on property with, with less than 15 square meters, that's not often encountered, I would say. Then bits, type of a number, required to true, and minimum of one. Of course, you cannot have an apartment without at least one bit. At least, at least one. And this is it uh, for the schema. And then type stamp, type stamp is equal to true. Export default mongoose dot models dot property. And here mongoose dot model is going to be property. And here properties. Come on, property schema. So we are ready with the models, we are ready here with the lib, which is the JWT and the database. Let me go back here, I think as I, as I told you, we are ready with this thing here. And here it's not username, it's mail, my bad guys. Into the round.js, change to email, it was username, change it to email. Sorry for that one, my bad. Okay, I suggest to you that we make here the login page. So here, login, outside of the API of course, you see here how it is. And here page.jsx rfce and then login.module.css and of course let me import the styling sheets here so import classes from dot slash and here come on login so let us start making the login page and after the login we're going to make all the interesting functionality apis and stuff but we need login for this Okay, use client, because we're going to have some use state and stuff. And here, cost router is equal to use router. And here, navigation. Then, I'm going to have const state, set state. Initially, it's a name to object, so like that. Then, I have const response type is going to be equal to error. Error. And here, success is going to be here to a success. Then I have const handle change is going to take the event as a parameter. And here set state, with it takes the previous state and it returns the following. Dot 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 previous. And here it dot target dot name. And here it set it to it dot target dot value. Just like that. Okay. Then I have const handle submit is going to be equal to async like this and here event dot prevent default and here if state dot password is equal to an empty string or state dot email is going to be equal to an empty string then i'm going to do toast can i just import it like that yes toast dot error and here fill all fields and here of course i can make it here as a return just stop the execution of the function and before doing anything else I'm, oh, okay, I'm going to make it right now. I'm going to tell you why. So here we write the container, classes of trapper. I want to just to add the toast container here below just because I may forget later and we probably wonder what is happening here. So you see it is out imported the toast container, nice. And here for the cons handle submit, I'm going to write the function right now and then we're going to write the JSX because it's not that hard. Then if state.password.linked is less than six characters, then I'm going to have here notify. So I'm going to make the function right now. Why we use toast.error? That's again something that we, we can do like that. So here text, response, and here toast, response, and then the text. This is how we do it. Super easy function. And here I can do it like that. So here it is the text and then response type.error. It's a much cleaner way to do it like this. And here again, return notify password must be six or more characters and here again response come on response type dot error nice 
and then try catch. So here console log dot error and here for the try block here const response is equal to await sign in here from next out slash react that function you see here out imported again and here credentials because credentials mean just email username and password like like a typical login not login with google not login with github or something it's just a normal login with your credentials that's what it means and here we must use this signing function because here we have written that piece of code here uh, where was the login here i want to split the screen just like that come on uh, nice so if there's something that, to, can, that I can explain, I will do it. In here credentials, and here I'm going to provide an object which is with the email, state.email, and then password is going to be state.password, and then redirect is going to be set to false. So this email and password that we set here inside the object is that we get back here. Those are the same exact things. Then if response question mark dot error is equal to no, this means that we have successfully logged in. So here, notify successfully logged in. Enjoy your browsing. And here, comma response dot type is success. Like that, I can even make a new line here. And I'm going to close it actually for now because it's taking too much space. And here, set timeout is going to be set here to 1000 milliseconds, which is a one second. And here, router.push, we're going to go to the home page. So when you log in successfully, this means that we get here the notification. And after a second, we are going to the page, the home page. I just want the user to see the message and then go there. Else, this means that we have an error. So this is for the error scenario, notify. Error occurred while logging. And here, response.type error like that and as you remember the response type is just that it's nothing hard to understand so we're already here with all functionality let's start typing the jsx so here i want to make it just like that h2 is going to be here login form below that i'm going to have here form which is which is going to have here on submit so here on submit is going to be handle submit come on submit and inside that form here we're going to have Classes dot input wrapper and here I'm going to have a label which is come on label and I want to delete this one okay so label with an HTML4 of email and here I'm going to type email and below that I'm going to have an input field with a type of an email name is going to be email and you probably wonder why I type this property because of this here it gets the tar the name of the target that's why. And here on change will be that function that I just showed you five seconds ago, the handle change. Then I am going to have classes of input wrapper. And here label is going to be here password. And here HTML4 is going to be a password. And again, we're going to have an input, which is a type of a password. Name is going to be password as well. So here password and here on change is going to be handle change. And oops, let me go here. To my login and right now why displaying me logout ah because i've done uh, some variable here i want to display it as a false okay right now i want to click on login something happening ah okay i, I was redirected so okay it's work it's working and if you wonder here in the nav bar earlier why i did instead of it's equal i did include because you see here the url i just wanted to write dot includes i know there's login i know it's a login page it's a uh, better it's readable and it works okay and here of course we need a button below the last input wrapper which is going to be dot classes dot login btn and here it's going to be login and let me go here to the css because we need to make it look great so let's go let me split the screen again and let's go. Dot container is going to receive here a position of relative, then height of 100 VH with of 100%, then background color is going to be RGBA 000, 0.75, uh, 65, not 75, my bad, then background image is going to be URL, so we'll uh, look closely. Point, point, slash, point, point, slash, asset, slash, estate1.jpg. Then, background size 
background size is going to be cover then background bl blend mode is going to be darken then display of flex justify content of center and alignment of sub center then dot wrapper is going to be height of 53 percent then width is going to be 70.5 percent i have done those values previously before filming the video it's not coming out of my mind just like this and here it's 35 not 53 so 35 not 53 background color is going to be here white then i have a display of flex then flex direction is going to be column then justify content of center align terms of center and gap of 12 pixel okay then dot wrapper and the h2 inside the wrapper is going to be with a margin bottle of 2.5 rm color is going to be var primary orange then i'm going to have font size of 32 pixel okay then wrapper and the form inside the wrapper is going to be a display of flex flex direction is going to be column and gap of 0 1.75 uh, rm so let me see right now how it's looking okay it's going to it's going it's looking better and better nice and here we have that darken overlay because of here back, uh, ba background blend mode and background cover okay then here i'm going to have a wrapper and the input i'm going to target the input wrapper which is going to receive here just one thing position relative then dot wrapper come on dot wrapper and then the input wrapper and then the input is going to be border none then border bottom of one pixel solid var secondary orange then padding of 0 0.75 rm padding bottom of 0 0.25 rm and the outline is going to be none then dot wrapper and the label inside the dot wrapper is going to be position absolute so here position absolute then it's going to be is going to be color of black then left of 0.25 rm bottom of 1.5 rm and transition of 250 milliseconds all then dot wrapper and input wrapper focus within and then the label inside is going to be position absolute then color is going to be 777 left of 0 rm bottom of 2 rm font size of 12 pixel then dot login btn is going to be here a width of 80 percent margin of zero auto then it's going to be margin top of two rm panic of 0.5 on top and bottom and 0.75 on left and right border is going to be none outline is going to be none then font size of 18 pixel border radius of 12 pixel background color is going to be var primary orange and cover is going to be white so right now this is how it's looking and when i hover you see how it is, has the same effect so you can type your password you can type email and that kind of stuff nice and you know uh, the login and register page are usually very 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 similar i'm thinking about copy pasting them because they are super super similar like 95 percent similar but i'm actually going to write it from zero if you want you can copy paste them but for the people that hate watching youtubers copy paste i'm here uh here not the, in the api but here the page i mean i copy paste my as well sometimes uh but uh, then nonetheless uh, let's start typing here okay so here let me import okay so here why i import it like this it's imported classes from like that then i'm going to have here inside the register oops const router is equal to use router and after i make the register i'm going to try the authentication because i cannot log in without registering then const state then set state is equal to come on is equal to use state okay then const response type is going to be equal to error and here error and here success is going to be success come on success nice then const handle change is going to be taking the event again oops set state it takes the previous one and here return question mark dot 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 and then e dot target dot name and then e dot target dot value here i didn't have cons handle submit here async and of course event dot prevent default is it, you always do that because the page will otherwise refresh because it's a default behavior then if state dot is if state dot password is equal to an empty string or state dot 
email is equal to an empty string or state.username is equal to an empty string, then I'm going to return notify, oops, notify, fill all fields and here response type.error. Then if state.password.length is less than six, return notify password must be six or more characters long. And here response type dot response type dot error. Nice. Oops. Then I'm going to have the, the try cache block and I'm going to write here a code. So here console log error and then const response is equal to await fetch HTTP localhost 3000 slash API slash register. And here method is going to be post method. Then the headers is going to be here con content type application slash JSON. This means that we will be sending JSON format data and usually they are reverse like that. I don't think is there's that great of a deal. I'm not sure, but let's make it like that. Then first headers, then method, and then the body lastly. So JSON dot stringify and here I'm going to spread the state. Or actually I don't need to spread the state, but do it like this. So here state.username, then email, state.email, and then password is going to be state.password. Nice. And then if response dot is question mark dot error is equal to no, like that. Notify. Successfully registered, registered, now login. And here response type dot success. And here const data is equal to await response.json. Set timeout is going to be here. Actually, I don't need the data. Here set timeout is going to be router.push and here to the login because I want to redirect the person to the login and here just 1000. And else we're going to have here a notify error occurred while logging here response type dot error nice and here of course i'm going to make the notify function function notify the response wait what was it in the login i'm just going to copy paste specifically this thing here yeah it's response but let's just copy paste it and here the toast let me import it nice and while we're at it with importing and stuff toast container nice Okay, and here, as I see, I need to be use client. We're going to get an error because we're going to use event listeners and use state. Here, name is going to be classes.container. Then classes, come on, dot classes, dot wrapper. And then let me just see the JSX. Okay, so here H2, register, form. And here below, I have a form. Come on. Form, and here. On submit is going to be here handle submit. Come on. And here again I have classes dot input wrapper. And here I know as I said I hate copy pasting, but here it's super is basically here is the same. Just let me copy paste it and I'm going to tell you. This we don't need to change a thing, but I want to make here another input wrapper just for the username. So here input wrapper label and here username and here username and here I have a wait uh, like like that okay no more error and here input is uh, is a text name is going to be username and then I'm going to again attach an on change which is going to be handle change like that and below the last div I'm going to give here a button with the register text and I'm going to give it a class name as well which class name is going to be here classes dot register btn. So let me see if I'm missing something. I don't think I'm missing something. Okay, let's get into again to CSS. Here dot container is going to be here a position of relative. It's going to be very similar to the login uh, CSS, but a little bit different in some areas. So height 100 VH with 100% background color is going to be here RGBA. 000, 0, 0, 0, 0.65, then background image URL dot dot slash dot dot slash asset slash estate to dot JPEG, then back size cover, then back blend mode is going to be here darken, then display of flex 
Justify content of center, come on, justify content of center, and the line items of center, then dot wrapper is going to be here, height of 45%, then the width is going to be 25, 22.5%, then background color is going to be here, white, then it's going to have a display of flex, flex direction is column, then justify content of center, align items of center, and border radius of 16 pixel, then dot wrapper, and the H2 inside the wrapper is going to have a margin bottom of 3.75 fire then color is going to be here var is going to be primary orange and then font size of 30 uh, 36 pixel here wrapper and the form inside the wrapper is going to have a display of flex flex direction is going to be calm and gap is going to be 3 item and here wrapper in the input wrapper is going to be position of relative then after the input wrapper i'm going to again target here wrapper then input wrapper and the input inside which is going to have border of none then border bottom of one pixel solid and here var secondary orange then padding of 0.75 rm padding bottom of 0.25 rm to reduce it a little bit and outline is going to be none then dot wrapper and label here position of absolute then color of black then left of 0.25 IRM, bottom of 1.5 IRM, transition of 250 milliseconds. So then dot trapper and the input trapper and here focus with thin and the label inside. I'm going to have position of absolute. What is that? Wait, just let me delete that. Okay, after the position of absolute, cover of 777, then left of 0, 0 IRM on 0 item then bottom of 2 item font size of 12 pixel and then we target the register btn so here register btn is going to be width of 8 percent then margin of 0 auto then i'm going to have margin top of 10 item padding of 0 0.5 on top and bottom is 0 0.75 on left and right and here border none outline none font size of 18 pixel border radius of 12 pixel background color is going to be var primary orange and here i'm going to have a color of white so right now we're going to see how it's looking here register not the speed register is it because here it's you see you go you get the error so right now change it to navigation it's going to be okay like that here oops i just need to change the height a little bit no problem so the height should be, let's say, 65%. 60.2, like that. Yeah, I liked it that way more. And here, margin bottom, let's say, of 5 IRM. Something like that. Okay. It's kind of long. But it is okay. Oops, here, 5 IRM. Why have so much margin? Then I can reduce this a little bit. Oh, it was 1 IRM. I, I typed here 10. Wait, 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 wait. Wait, wait, wait. That's why it was looking like that. Okay, right now it's, it's 45. Let's make it 47.5. Okay, I like it that way. And here, I remember one thing here. I'm just going to test the register just in a second. Here, inside the models, I added the phone number here. I want to remove that phone number here and add it inside the property. Here, when a user wants to create a property, he's going to attach the phone number on the list of the property, not the user model itself. Okay, I want uh, to console log the data here inside the register just to see if it's working as I want it to work. So, then I'm going to give here const data is equal to await, res await response.json, const log data. And here, let's say John Doe, one, two, three, the email is the same at gmail.com and password one, two, three, one, two, three. And right now, oh my God, I remember I have not created the API of the register. So this is the last part before trying our register. Luckily, this is a very easy thing. It's basically 20 lines of code. So we're not going to go slow with that. Here, register route.js. And here, import db. Then, oops, import here, bcrypt from bcrypt and then import user from the models user then export async function 
and here we give the name of whatever is the request method. So here it's a post. We don't try to register something. It must be like that. Caps, uh, it must be uppercase like that. We take a request and here a try catch and here for the return I'm going to write return new response and here is going to be error dot message and here is going to be status of 500 and here inside the catch inside the try block here I'll wait db dot connect then console then const we take the username email and password from the await request.json I know the syntax is a little bit different than Node.js that made an impression to me as well then const is existing is equal to await user dot find one and here we're going to do it with the email then is is existing here we are going to throw a new error which is going to be here user already already exists then const hashed password is going to be equal here to await decrypt dot hash and here pass 10 characters then const new user is going to be called to await user dot create and here username email password and hashed passwords then const password dot 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 new user dot underscore doc and here return new response and here I get I'm going to rename this to pass because I get an error like that. So here pass and here change it to a pass. Yeah, that's why here I have written it pass. I just didn't see that from my other screen. And here new response, of course, with a space here is going to be json.stringify the user. And here we return a status of 201. This means successfully created. Great. That was the register. As I told you, it's super easy. How many? 27 lines of code here with all those spaces in the imports. It's super easy function. Nice. Okay, right now I can try it. So right now I, I'm not sure if it's going to work from the first try. We can only see. Click register. Here, unexpected token URI is not a valid JSON. Let me see what's the matter here. Is it maybe here HTTP local calls 3000 slash API slash register? I'm going to see what's the error. Guys, <laughs> the error was a very simple one. This is because we need to create a .env file for the mongo url and all, all other stuff so here mongo underscore url here i'm going to get it just now for the jwt secret let's say secret one two three one two three just something random of course in a production application you want much more long and complex secret much more this is just for development purposes okay here i'm just going to close all those tabs here for things that i was looking trying to debug and stuff and here let me go YouTube example is here the email just let me write here the stuff come on load and uh, here I'm going to make the here projects new project and I'm going to name it let's say real estate make js 13 something like this create project database of course, I'm not going to to pay right now. Yeah, this thing here, and here I'm going to set the username and password. Here I'm going to make a the IP address, at entry, connect drivers, and here is the URL. Nice. And here I'm going to paste it in here instead of the here inside the brackets and the password, you just copy paste whatever you have written. I made the username and password the same because I don't want to forget the password right now, development purposes, blah blah blah. Of course, in a real application, as I told you, things are much more complex for security reasons and stuff. Okay, I'm going to restart my server because I know when I touch MV files, I need to restart my server. So here npm run dev and it can has been restarted. Nice. Okay, now right now, let me try to register. Let's say, I don't know, test user123, without the at sign, at gmail.com, and here, 123, 123. So right now, let me click register. And right now, what is happening here? Can I check? I want to console log here the response. I think it's a success, let me see here. Uh, if I refresh here, I want 
people know if it has been successful. Because I didn't get any message and stuff, but I didn't get any error. And this from the image, it's not an error from the register. Guys, the register worked, I'm going to show you right now. It was just that I forgot to place the toss container. As I told you earlier, I forget some things, especially like filming a long video. So instead of complaining, I'm going to show you right now. I have not changed anything in the code. Right now, when I click register, you see, successfully registered, now login. I'm just going to copy here the email. And uh, I, why it's not redirecting me? Wait, I want to check out here. So here inside the register, here I should be redirected to the login page. Oops, like that. Here, let me try to register with a new account. Right now, I think I will be redirected. Yes, right now I am redirected, so no problem, okay. Oops. Let's see here, browse collections, some user, I want to log in with some users. Some user here, that's one that I created earlier. So here it is, user123 at gmail.com. One, two, three, one, two, three. Logged in, enjoy your browsing. And right now I am redirected here. But you see here the nav bar. I want to change this nav bar here. So to, to change our nav bar here, we are going to, first of course, we need to go to the nav bar. And here I want to delete this thing here. And here I want to get the data and rename it to a session. This is what this syntax means. You get something and rename it. And here the use session. But in order to use use session, here I need to go where it is to the layout. And here I'm going to uncomment this here. Right now we need it. And here I'm going to remove this comment. Use session must be wrapped in session provider. But it is indeed wrapped in session provider. Come on, I need to refresh the page probably. Why is nothing, why nothing is popping up? That's weird. Welcome guys, I found the bugs. So here, here we are on the way to a session provider. Here I forgot to put a return and that's why it was just a black page. So here, just put a return and you will be all right. Sometimes when I start, I do, do this bad mistakes. It happens, it's a normal process of development. And the other part was that here. So when we go to the API, so API alt, next out and here the route. So here where we made the login logic here we need to provide a secret and I'm just going to show you here directly from here. So here on the next out, you need to copy this part. So here, paste it and I just want to see if it's equivalent to our, into the .env. So here it's next old secret. So here just rename it to next old secret. And right now I'm going to show you. So here, let me go to my project. Oops, not here to my channel but here to my project and I want to refresh. So I think I have started it. Let me see here. Yes, it has been started. So right now we are here. Okay, let's try to log in. Why it's not? Ah, here, okay, it was just a bug. So here I'm going to log in and I have already made an account with those credentials. So I'm not just typing it out of my mind. And right now I want to click login. And we're going to be redirected here if something appears. Yes, so here is success. success. And here you see what we get. I just want to refresh the page to see it has been persisted. And it is indeed persisted. I'm going to refresh several more times. So you see it's persisted again, again. So we know that it works. And here is the line 15. So here I want to show you into the nav bar that you know everything's working. So you see here, session.user and it shows us exactly what we want. Here, I just need to change here the condition. So just let me make it like this. And right now, okay, so we have it here, but here I want when this is true. So I'm going to do it that way. So here, I want to get this thing like that and here put it as a state because the page does not re-render for, for that condition. That, that is the problem. So here, let's say is logged in, set is logged in and here you state and here I'm going to paste it. So right now I want to make even a use effect here. So this use effect is going to run when this value changes. So like that, 
and here I'm just going to set is log chain to whatever is here and I'm going to do it that way so here with a boolean and paste it this boolean means that oops bonus parenthesis let me remove it okay so this boolean means that the value if it's let's say no I just want to comment here it's no or undefined or zero or empty string just a false value is just going to make it directly as a false but if it has something let even a character let's say it has let's say one this is a truthy value so right now I'm sure it's going to work right now when I refresh the page let me see here so it doesn't work maybe I have uh, did here with the condition or something oh no here because I have not changed the state whoops my bad that's why it's not working kind of logical you know okay right now you see it is working and here the email doesn't pop up let me see here is it because I don't save the email so here the user and dot email no I have here the dot email so here I'm just going to leave it like that I just don't want to waste my time with that email it's not that important we know that our session works and this is a very important thing so the next part here you see oops just let me remove the console and just to tell you one more thing here, I like to make videos authentic like this because you are going to make a lot of mistakes, you are going to be tire tired. I film my videos after work and you know when you are working you get tired so it is normal that I make mistakes. But even if you are not tired, it is again completely normal and I want to show you the authentic process of making an application. So right now the next part is here to make those properties dynamic. Okay, right now. I've opened the list model. This is the next part. So we make the list model to be able to upload and list, I mean properties. And after that, we're going to have properties in our database. So we can fetch them and dynamically put them in a catalog and the details as well. So let's go. Here for the list, we first start of course with the structure that is the JSX. So here, as you know, the structure here is a class name classes.container and then I'm going to have here dot classes dot wrapper. Nice. Then I'm going to have an H2 with a class name of title and the text inside is list property. Below the H2, I'm going to have a form. And this form is going to contain the input fields which we are going to track in order to be able to list that property. So here from now, I just don't want to forget. Here on the on submit, I make go, I'm going to make a handle submit. Right now, I just going to declare the function nothing more, nothing less. So here, const handle submit async and it takes an event and just event prevent default. This is it for now, just to have it declared. Okay, then the next part is to make here a diff with the class name of input wrapper. Come on, input wrapper, like that. And here inside I'm going to give a label, which is going to be title like that. And it's going to give, of course, an HTML, HTML4 of title. So we're going to connect it with the input. Then I'm going to have here an input which is going to have a name of title. Then it's going to have an ID of title. Come on, title. Then it's going to have a type of a text, of course. And then I'm going to have it a non change, which for now is going to be just an empty function. Of course, we're going to track the, the input field. This is absolutely necessary. Then I'm thinking about copy pasting this because they're going to be quite similar. So I need to copy to paste it just four more times. So one, two, three, four. And here, let me change here. So here is desk. So here we change the text. Then, come on, desk. Then we change here the HTML4, the name, the ID, and it's still going to be a type of a text. Then the the this input field, the third one is going to be here price. Then the HTML4 is going to be price. And the same applies for the name, for the ID, but the Type is going to be a number, of course. After the price, then it is square meters. So here, sq dot meters, and here for the HTML4, you guessed it, sq meters. Then, just let me copy it. Here is the same. Here is the same, and here it's a number again. And I am writing the name here because I'm going to have one function which is going to track all of the state inside an object, not an not an use state, a state I mean, for every single input. But we're going to have one whole state that is going to track everything so we are going to see if you don't get what I mean it's not it's a super common practice then here it's bets 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 and again it's a type of a number and here I'm going to give another input wrapper which is going to be especially for the image 
So here I'm going to name it classes dot input wrapper image. It is going to be a little bit trickier than order input fields, but it's still not hard. So follow me. Here the label is going to be upload image. Then I'm going to have here an HTML4 which is going to be image. And here I'm going to make it on several lines and here AI outline file image. I want to have an icon here. Then I'm going to have an input field which is going to be a type of a file this time. So this for the image as you probably guessed. A type, I have already written the type. So here I want to connect it with the label. So here it's they must be the same. The HTML4 connects with the ID of the input field. And then I want to make it style display none. And you're going to probably be like, wow, we have diff mania. Why do you do it? Because I want to be able to click the label because the input field is not that beautiful and it's bad for, at least for me, it's kind of ugly for design purposes. So that's why I want to have it here as a label. We are going to see what I mean. And here I'm going to have a non change, but I'm going to write it after the type. So here on change and it's going to be here taking the event and then it's going to set the photo to e.target.files and it's an array. So we want to get the first image because we're going to have only one image. So the zero weight index. And this is it for now. Let me go here be below the upload image and we have two more input uh, input wrappers, but they're the, for the select. So here classes dot input wrapper. And inside here, I'm going to have a select. And here is going to be initially a value of the state dot country. Then on change is going to be here, the handle change again, which is going to be here for every single function. But right now I want to make it an empty. So we're going to make it just when I write the last, in, the last input wrapper in the element inside. So then I have a name of a country. After the name of a country, I have an ID of a country. And then class name is going to be classes.country. And inside the select, I'm just going to get the countries here you see they were out imported and here countries dot map here I get a country and here I'm making an instantaneous return with the parentheses nice and here what I'm going to return I'm going to return an option which is going to have a value of a country and then key is going to be country and here inside of course oops not here but inside the between the input closing and opening tag I'm going to have here the country it's a text. Okay, nice. Then I'm going to have here for the type. So here I want to copy this because it's super similar and I'm going to show you what are the similarities. The class name here is the same for the div. Here instead of state.country is going to be state.type. Then here the name is type and the ID is type and the classes.country is not classes.country but it's dot type. Then here is going to be types. Here it's a type. And here we do it like this. And here I see that I have a problem. I think because I need to go one level up, maybe that is the problem. It's because here those diff, what is exactly the problem? I'm going to see. Guy, guys, the problem was that we had just one extra diff here. Just delete one closing diff tag. And here just after the last input wrapper so just control x oops okay right now we have no more error as you see and then we are ready with the input wrappers but as you know we need to have some buttons and stuff in order to list it so here i'm going to have a button with the class name here of list btn and here i'm going to have a type of submit and inside that button here i'm going to have list estate then Below that button here, I'm going to have AI, AI outline close. And here I'm going to have a class name of classes.close icon. Then I'm going to have on click, which is going to be just to close the model. So here handle height list model. And we are going to get that one as a prop. And then size is going to be 25, just to make it a little bit bigger. Nice. And here I want to make that in, not inside the form, but outside the form. And the last thing here for the JSX is here. I want a toss container because I want to notify the user for his actions. Nice. Then I think it's not that I think, but it is the time to get here the Cloudinary data. So right now I'm going to show you how to upload images with Cloudinary. 
and warning it is super easy trust me guys i just learned several for several minutes and i just know how to upload them so here just type cloudinary and here you see this is the link so if you don't have an account you see here the red button sign up for free but i do have an account so i'm going to log in and here i'm just going to log in okay my friends as you see here i have logged in and we're going to need two things the first part is here the cloud name and guys don't use my cloud name just make yourself because i'm going to disable everything after i post the video don't do it so here i'm just going to copy the cloud name and here with uppercase so here const and here cloud underscore name and just paste it here because it's a constant and you know it's a value that never going to change it, we don't we just need it's a convention that's why i do it like this and we are going to need another value which we're going to get here you see above your name here we have settings here that icon click it then okay loading and here click on the upload here on the sidebar and here you see here we have some upload presets right now i'm going to make just a one for you guys to see how it's done disclaimer it's super easy so here i'm just going to name it real estate up youtube next js 13 something like this and here make the mode unsigned and just copy it here this is it guys save do you see how easy it is here click save again just to be sure settings a bit successfully nice and here const upload preset and here just paste it great this is it then here i want to have oops const uh response type this is just for the toastify because we're going to have two scenarios error and here i just want to have error and then success and you probably guessed it success nice then i want to declare my state which is going to track everything here so here state state set state use state initially it's an empty object nice then i'm going to have photo set photo and here i'm going to have use state no okay and here comes data session i need it as well here so i'm going to get it. and then the last thing i want to have is use router the hook here so here use router and change it here to navigation right now i don't know why when it's out imported it's slash what was router it's navigation you're going to get a bug trust me okay and here i want to make a function const handle change it takes the event here and then set state it takes the previous state and here return an object with the previous state and here event.target.name and here event.target.value so right now this is how we track it and here just uh, right now i'm on windows just select one control d and do it till the end just select everything here with that pattern you see here and right now just paste the function this is it guys it's as you see super easy and comfortable okay right now let me make the handle submit or actually i want to see how the page looks like so here when i click on list handle height list model is not defined it's not defined of course it's not defined so i think it was here in the nav bar and here i pass it but i don't uh, get it from here so right now i need to make it like this here curly braces destructure it and we get it so right now if i click on list you see it pops up but of course we need to use some CSS, my friends, because it looks, let's say, it could look better and it's going to look very nice. So let me head into the CSS file and let's go. Just let me close here the nav bar. Let me split the screen and you're going to see what is going on. Nice. So right now, like that. Okay, like that. Just let me just see the return. Okay. Dot container is going to be background color of RGBA 0, 0, 0, 0 0.6 then it's going to be position fixed then it's going to be overflow hidden then it's going to be top one left one height is going to be 100 vh width is going to be 100 vw display of flex justify content of center align items of center so right now it's going to be a little bit better okay but we still have a lot of work to do here in that css file so let's go Posi wrapper position relative then it's going to have a width of 27.5 percent then height of 8 percent then border radius of 12 pixel padding of 2 irm back color is going to be white then display of flex and here flex direction of column then 
dot wrapper and here the title is going to be text align of center then margin bottom of 5 irm font size of 36 pixel and color of 333 so a little bit darkish grayish color so right now you see it's going to it's looking better and better with every class name and with every styling that we write so we still have some stylings more than a few stylings so let's go here dot wrapper and the form inside is going to be position relative then it's going to have a width of 100% display of flex flex direction of column then an item of center and gap of 1.75 irm then dot wrapper and the input wrapper is going to be here position relative then wrapper the input wrapper and the input inside so we target the inputs border none then border come on border bottom of one pixel solid and here var secondary orange then padding of 0 0.75 irm padding bottom of 0 0.25 irm and outline is going to be none so right now you see how are they looking but still we have to style it a little bit more so let's continue here then i'm going to target here dot wrapper and the label so position absolute here then color is going to be black then a left of 0 0.25 irm then bottom of 1.5 irm and transition of 250 milliseconds so okay then dot wrapper and the input wrapper so focus within this means when the input field got focus i want to change the label so when something inside the input wrapper is focused which can be only our input field the label is going to have different stylings it's kind of confusing just watch this part of the video again that explains the last 15 seconds then position absolute color is going to be 777 then left is going to be zero irm bottom is 2 irm font size of 12 pixel then dot wrapper and select i'm going to apply width of 200 pixel then outline none then text align is center font size of 18 pixel then padding of 0 0.5 irm back color var is going to be primary orange then i'm going to apply color white border radius of 8 pixel and margin right of 0 0.5 arm so right now you see how it's looking it's looking better and better but we still need to style it a little bit more okay after the select here i want to target the input wrapper but the image so here input wrapper image and it's going to have the following styles position of relative then margin top of 2.5 arm margin right of 12, 12 so 12.5 12 arm and wide space of no wrap then input wrapper image and then the label inside is going to be display of flex align items of center and gap of 0 0.5 irm and font size of 18 pixel nice then i'm going to target the list btn and it's going to be cursor pointer outline is going to be none border one pixel solid transparent then padding of 0 0.75 irm on top and bottom and 1.75 on left and right then background color var and here primary orange then color white after that font size of 20 pixel border radius of 12 pixel margin top of 1.25 irm and transition of 150 milliseconds all is in out nice then i want to apply a hover effect for it so here list btn and here hover is going to be here background color of white then color of var primary orange and then border color of var secondary orange so right now you see how it is great and lastly i want to target the close icon which is going to receive a cursor cursor of pointer position of absolute top of 14 pixel and right of 8 pixel like that so you see how it is and when i click on it it closes nice so right now let's write the logic here for the handle submit which is the last part for that component so first i want to make a variable here const is value empty it's, it's not a variable it's a constant but yeah i want to have here a data so object dot values and here i'm going to get state and here st when state dot sum and here i get the value if if it's equal to empty so here what i'm doing here here 
you see, let's say the name here is title. So here I get the title and let's say here it's written, let's say George. And right now when I get the values, I'm getting here the George. So just remove it like this. And if George is equal to empty, then this is going to be false. And only one, if it's one, only one false, here is going to be an empty. Uh, not empty, but a false value. Here is value empty is going to be false. I mean, it's going to be true when this condition is hit. So we are going to give a validation. Sorry if I confuse you. Let's go. Is value empty? And if that's true, return notify. Oops, return notify. Come on. I'm going to bank that function just now. Fill all fields. And here, response type dot error. Then try catch console dot error error then const image url is going to be here await upload image const upload image is equal to async it takes an it i'm not sure if it no it doesn't take an event of course it doesn't take an event i'm going to make that that function after i write here the hindle submit so let's go into the hindle submit i don't want to redirect your attention then const response is equal to await fetch HTTP here HTTP localhost 3000 slash API slash property and here we make an object and that object is going to have a headers so here content type application slash JSON then auto authorization here and here bearer and here session dot user dot access token then method post and here body dot json dot stringify and here dot dot state and here image image url and here i rename it to image like that because here it's that way in our database and then current owner is going to be here session question mark dot user question mark dot underscore dot id so here i'm just going to whoops make a little bit space so it's not that cluttered so you see what we are doing here and then if response.ok okay is a false value, which is not a 200, there is an error. So here, throw new error and it's going to be error occurred. Okay. Then if you have passed that condition, const property is equal to await response.json and then router.push here and here details slash property dot underscore ig. And here I want to make a question mark just like that. And this is the logic, guys. And right now, the plot image is just for the cloudinary. It's nothing hard. So you're going to see what do I mean. If photo is empty, return. Then form data, new form data. This is the syntax. And here it's form data with capital letter here. And then form data dot append. And here it is file and then photo. Then form data dot append. And here it is upload underscore preset and here upload preset then a try cache block so here i'm going to have console.log error and here whoops and here for the try block i'm going to have const response is equal to await fetch and here just just follow me it's going to be quite hard you can copy it from the github actually so it's not a problem just go to github and here https colon slash slash api dot cloudinary dot com slash v1 underscore one slash dollar sign curly braces cloud underscore name slash image slash upload just like that and here i'm going to give options which is going to be just method post oops come on method post come on <laughs> and then i'm going to give here the just the body form data don't stringify it just just this this is it then const data is equal to await response.json and here const image URL is going to be equal to data.secure URL. You can console log this to see it is basically the link for our image and then we return the link. So this is how we do it. We upload the image, we, we return the link and then we can display it later when we have the catalog and details which is going to be quite soon. So let me go here again to my browser and I want to console log here the state so you see how it works. So here state, oh, I forgot what the last part, which is very simple. I'm just going to copy paste it because we have written that several times already. Just the notify function. 
and here I'm going to place it just below. Nice. Here list, and I want to console log here. So right now, here you see how it is title SS, then here again SS, let's say D, 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 I mean uh, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, then SQ meters, so 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, and you see how we do it. Let me delete here those values. Okay. Uh, let's, let's try to upload it. So I'm going to console log here the property even to, see, to know if it's a success. So here let's say title our property. I'm going to give this as a description. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3 as a price. 1, 2, 3, 4 square meters. 1, 2, 3, 4 beds. And, he and here for uploading the image. So right now let me get, let's say, this picture. Let's say Norway. Let's say family home. And right now let me click on list estate. So I wonder if we're going to get an error or it's a success. Uh, not found at handle error. So we have an error. Let me check it. And guys, the error is very simple. We have not created the, an API route. So here we're going to have here a folder, which is ID, which is going to be used later, but I want to create it right now. And here I'm going to make it here on the root level of the property, just route.js. So here you see here with the ID inside here route, and here we have another route just without an ID or something. So here just click on that one, which is just property and directly route without the ID. And let's go import db from libdb. Then import verify JWT token from here libjwt and import property from models property. And here export async function and here get request. This is for getting the catalog and then we're going to make for uh, the post, which is the what we want. Here await db.connect, here a try catch, return new response, here json.thingify, no, and here status of 5000. And here I'm going to have const properties is equal to await property dot find like that. And here dot limit 16 dot populate current owner like that. And here return new response is going to be JSON dot stringify properties and here status 200. Nice. Then export async function post request and here await db.connect here I'm going to get the access token here access token request.headers.get authorization then and here it's lowercase uh, or actually it's uppercase so here just uppercase then const token is going to be equal to access token dot split because you know it's a better space and we want to get the token this is how we get the token and here const decoded token is going to be equal to verify JWT token like that. Then if access token is a false value or the decoded token is a false value, if one of those two is a false value, so let me put here the exclamation mark, then return new response is going to be here json.stringify and here error unauthorized request. And then I'm going to give here status of 5 and after that I'm going to have a try catch so here try catch and here it is just one I want to copy it actually I want to copy this line of code so you know for the cache block I keep always the same uh, and here const body is equal to await request.json and then const new property is equal to await property.create and here body and then return new response is going to be here json.stringify and here new property status of 201 so right now the api is ready for that specific functionality let's try it here i'm just going to have the same values you know i have not changed anything and right now let me click on list estate so let's see right now if we're going to get an error or something here i get again an error maybe i want to refresh the page and i will refresh the page and right now let me try again so here i'm just going to write some values like that and here upload image let me make here norway family home just here remove the console and right now let me see if i get an error again i'm going to get an error i'm going to debug and see what is the problem guys the mistake was an unbelievable one here let me just show you here in the code here i had a dash you see it was a dash 
don't have a dash. Change it to an underscore and everything will be fine. This was the only mistake, just a simple typo. Okay, right now I'm going to show you that it's working. And here I just play some mock data, here the image of the estate, here just selecting something random. And right now I'm clicking on list estate. And you're going to see in five seconds. Okay, let's try to list a property. So here I'm just going to enter some values to see if everything is working as expected. Here I'm going to put a photo, here some options for the select and let's click on list estate and if we are redirected to the page here you are going to see by the URL it it working. Okay right now we have not yet created the dynamic page for the details but we know that it is working 100% and I just want to write one more thing here. When we list a model here as you saw the list model persisted even though everything worked it's bad practice to leave the model after your submission. So right now after here is the handle submit function. So after this here, I'm going to handle height list model. I'm just going to do that. So then it's not going to persist the model. Okay. And the next part of our application is here to go and to remove that mock data and then fetch from the server. So Okay, right now I navigated while I wasn't recording just to the page.js here. So just go here to the page.js that you see here and we're going to write some code. So first, the first part is to make this use client because we're going to use use state hook. So here just declare the use client directive and let's start typing the code. So here let's declare a state which is estates, then set estates and here is going to be an empty array initially. So like that with the parentheses, okay, and then we're going to write a use effect here, which is going to have no dependencies, just an empty array, and here the function const fetch fetch estates is equal to async, and here I try cache block because it's an asynchronous operation, and then error, and here const response is equal to await fetch HTTP localhost 3000 slash API slash property, just that, it's a get method by default so we don't need to specify it explicitly and then we json the response and we get the data and then we set it here and uh, instead of passing here properties data i'm going to delete this mock data here we're going to pass the estates that we're getting from the server and let me go here and here i have written a comment beforehand so we need to change this from just id underscore id it's a must Okay, and then let's go to our property card here. And right now, here, I think we don't need to change anything. So let me see what we get here. If I refresh, okay, let me console log here to see. Ah, I have not called a function. <laughs> That's why we don't see anything. Okay, right now I'm going to call the function and refresh the page. And I'm going to, so here, invalid src prop. I know how to fix it guys, it's a very simple fix. So here, let me go to my GitHub. It is because the image starts from REST Cloudinary and we need to specify that it can get images from that exact source. So here, if I go to next.config.js, here we can just copy this here. It is from my other video, block next.js. But if you, if you feel confused, you can just go to my project that I'm going to paste in the GitHub. So I'm going to even go there. So to avoid any confusion. So here you see next real estate project next.config.js and here just copy. Let me go to my next config and paste. And right now I'm going to restart my server and show you that it's working. And guys, you see the images are popping up here. This one is just loading and it is ready. So here, if I click on this one, here we see details undefined. And this is probably something to do that I haven't changed on other place here inside the link. Yes, here is just an underscore changes here inside property card.jsx. Here the link here set it again to underscore ig. Here I have made a comment, but I didn't see it. Okay, let me remove that comment. Let me go back to the home page. And right now, if I click here, you see here we get a dynamic ID. So remember how it ends here, 949. Let me click on this one. Here it ends with B955. So we know it's dynamic and we know that here everything is working. Nice. The next part here for our application is to make the details page. So see you into the details page. 
Okay, let's navigate here to the details page. So here, details, ID, and here we have created those two folders, CSS and JSX. And here, oops, uh, okay, so let's right now change some things here. Right now, if I click, let me see what do I get here, the CTX. So here from the ID, I'm going to leave it like this, but here to fetch property, we need to do a server request. So here, I'm just going to delete that function for now. And here, write async function fetch property like that. And here, const response is equal to await fetch http http localhost 3000 slash api slash property and here slash id then headers is going to be here authorization and here bearer session question mark dot user question mark dot access token and here i'm going to specify the method get and then you know the trick so here const data is equal to await response dot json and then set property is going to be to the data. And here I'm going to remove that space. Nice. And uh, this is it for the fetching the data. Right now I want to console to call the function. And of course here to set the ID as a parameter. And right now I'm just going to console log here property. And right now let me see if we are getting something. Ref session is not defined here. Why session is not defined? Do we? Ah, here. Oh, yes, I have not declared it. So here, session data, I didn't really name it to session. This is a convention to use session. And here you see it is auto imported. So right now, if I refresh the page, I'm sure that we're going to get the data. So what is the problem right now here? Unexpected end of JSON input. Let me see what's the problem. And it's not a bug or something. It's just that I have not created the API. So right now we're going to create the API. So import db from uh, add sign slash lip slash db and this is here inside the property id and route so here you can see the path so you don't get mistaken then import verify jwt token and then import property from models property and here export async function get then request and ctx and here await db.connect then const id is equal to ctx.params.id and here try catch and here inside the catch return new response is going to be here json.stringify no and then status here comma and status of 500 and here inside the try block i'm going to write const property is equal to await property dot find by id id and here populate current owner and here dot select minus password and here return new response json dot stringify property and here status of 200 nice and here i'm going to declare for put and delete because later not later but right now after uh, we write here the server we're going to have the functionality in our client to be able to either delete or update our property so here I'm going to start typing export async function put and it must be an uppercase request ctx and here again I'm going to just copy this code just the try catch and here I'm going to delete those two but I'm going to leave the catch. So here let me just paste a little bit down and here await db.connect then const id is equal to ctx.params.id then const access token is equal to request.headers.get and here authorization then const token is equal to access token dot split and here i'm going to split it by a space so here as you remember we pass the bearer and the token and the space is going to be the divider between those two so it's going to be an array with two elements the first one is the bearer and the second one is the token and I want to get the token, which is the second element. This means the first index. As you know, zero index, first element. First index, second element. And here, const decoded token is equal to verify JWT token. And then I'm going to make a condition to check if the token is valid or if it's existing in the first place. So here, decoded token. 
oops and here i'm going to return return new response json dots come on json dot stringify and here error then is going to be an authorized wrong or expired token and then we're going to have here a status of 403 then for the try block we're going to just get the body initially so await request.json then const property is equal to await property dot find by id id and then populate current owner and then if property question mark dot current owner question mark dot uh, dot id to string and then they call that token dot question dot underscore id to string and here return new response is going to be here json dot stringify and then message is going to be here only owner can update his property and here status 403 then i'm going to return to get to update the property and then to return it so here await property dot find by id and update and here id set and here i'm going to spread the body and here new true after that i'm just going to return it so here i'm just going to copy the variable name return new response json dot stringify like that and here status of 200 nice and then the next uh, part is to write the delete so here export async function delete again uppercase every single method must be uppercase inside the j inside uh the api in next 30 it's it's a must it's, it's not going to work correct if you don't keep that it's not a convention it's a rule and then const id is equal to ctx.params.id const access token is equal to request.headers.get authoriz authorization const token is equal to access token dot split here i'm going to split it like that and get the first the, the first index so the, the second element then const decoded token and i can just copy that decoded token and here the condition so just to save some time and then a try catch so for the catch as you know i just make one and then copy paste it some generic message here and some status and here for the try i'm going to write the following code so const property is equal to await property dot find by id then the id and here dot populate and here current owner then if property question mark dot current owner question mark dot id to string and here if it's not equal to decoded token dot id to string like that is going to be return new response json dot stringify message and here only owner can delete his property and then status of 403 and then await property dot find by id and delete and here id and lastly here we just return some response so here return new response json dot stringify message successfully deleted property and then status of 200 so this is here for the backend and let's go here to details and finish it this component this page as you see here we get them but here i don't see the type and i saw the error it is very simple here i have just forgotten to type here the type field <laughs> you know it's a play of words so here type of a string and required and here we can put the phone number as required because we're going to need it and we're going to later display it here where it is in the details okay so here when i go to the list model so here when i click on list right now i don't see here the type and i'm going to add it right now as well as the phone number it's going to be very easy it's going to take us less than a minute literally a copy paste so here 
I can just go and here and here is the type actually I'm mistaken I just need to add here the phone number so here phone number and here phone number I'm going to add it as a name as an ID and here the type will be tail this is a specific type for phone numbers it's not a number it's not a string it's a type of a tail and just let me check here so here I'm just going to make it a camel case just for the convention and right now it would work but you see here it's a little bit overflowing so I'm just going to make the list model CSS a little bit bigger so here I'm going to make it height of 85 percent and let's see okay right now it looks great okay so let me make here let's say property web dev mania something like this here for the description price here's square meter just in value here some phone number here upload image here I'm just going to pick this let's say Italy and uh, mountain viewer and let's click on list state and let's see if it's going to work I'm sure it's going to work okay here as you see we're redirected here the image is going to be displayed just right now and here why I don't see that let me check here let me go here to the details and let me con okay so here it's already console locked so I can just click here and see the object so right now let me see so here we get the phone number and I don't see the type let me see probably here I have forgotten uh, inside the list model so here is the type name type okay so why it's not scenic it's quite of an interesting while I was not filming I've made a new property and the only thing that you need to do in order to see the type here and everything is just to restart the server because right because mongoose here will restart and you will get the proper schema so right now as you see here this is from the back end so here as you see we have the type family home and you see here family home Norway and here you see Norway okay the next part of our nice application is to make here let me just go here to the details page close the others right now you see here everything is ready except two things I want to make those icons do the thing that they're intended to do so here for the green pencil I want to make it editable and here for the red button this is of course you guess it for deleting the property so let's start here with the functions and we're going to make the functionality okay so here handle delete it is going to be very easy function it's going to be try catch so here try catch console dot error error and here const response is equal to await fetch HP localhost 3000 and here I get an error because here I forgot the async slash come on slash API slash property slash here the ID and here I'm going to put some parameters so the parameter here is going to be header so we need to provide our token authorization and here bearer session question mark dot user question mark dot access token and the method as you know is going to be delete and here as you see delete nice and then if response dot okay this means that the property has been successfully deleted router dot push and here we're going to push to the front page this is how we're going to notify the user else I'm going to throw an error throw new error and the error is going to be couldn't delete the property okay and here I'm going to copy this function and place it exactly here and I have already placed it here when I declared the function so if you haven't just place it here on the second button okay here this function is going to be a little bit more interesting which is for uh, here for the editing so here let me go to this function handle open the edit model and let's start uh, typing the logic So we need to go here down to our page and here I have as you see I have already written the logic here I have not written it while I was not recording you must have written that as well so here let me go here to the edit model and right now we're going to get here the props and start typing the logic so handle height edit property then property then ID and then I'm going to declare here the, the cloud name and uh, where it is here inside the list model I need it here for the cloud in area so go to the list model and I'm going to need those values here those two values 
account name and upload presets. This is here for the cloud in area. Then I'm going to need the response type. So here, const response type, and you probably know. So here, error, error, and then success, and here, success. Nice. Then const state set state is going to be here to the use state. And I can just declare the property instantly. So this is going to be our state initially, then const photo set photo is going to be equal to no. This is if you want to update the photo. Initially it's going to be no, but if you want to update the photo, we're going to get the URL from the cloud native after the plot, of course. Then const data and we're going to name it as a, to the session and here is our session and then const router is equal to use router and here I'm going to change it to navigation. Nice. Then I'm going to declare the handle change function that you've probably seen right now in our application. This is basically for updating the state. So here we take the previous and then return dot 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 previous like that comma and here e dot target dot name and then e dot target dot value. Then I'm going to have here const handle submit and I'm going to take the event and here. And here, event dot prevent default. You know, when you submit a form, the default behavior is to refresh. I don't want the form to be refreshed. Nice. Then const is value is empty. Is going to be equal to object dot values. And here, values values from the state. I need to provide the state. And here, dot sum. And here, value. If value is equal, if only one of the values is equal to empty, this is what it means. You know, it's an object, a key value pair. If only one from the values is empty, this is going to be true, and we're going to throw a notification and return. So we are not going to execute the rest of the function. So is value is empty, and here return notify. Come on, let, let me go back. Return notify, and here fill all fields, exclamation mark, and here response response type dot error then try catch is going to be here console error error and here if photo is equal to true then let image url and here await upload image then state dot image is equal to image url this is how we're going to do it the same logic as in the list model then const response is equal to await fetch http localhost 3000 slash api slash property and here slash id and here headers is going to be content type and here application slash json then i'm going to put the token as well because i'm going to need it authorization and here bearer and here session question mark dot user question mark dot access token Then method is going to be put and here body is going to be json.stringify state and here comma current owner is going to be session question mark dot user question mark underscore id. Okay, and then we make an if so if the response is a false value, this means it's not a 200, that's what it means to be okay, 200. So if it's not a 200 response status, throw new error and here is going to be error occurred. Otherwise here, I'm going to get the property from the response. So here await response.json and then router.push and here slash details and here the property or under dot underscore id and then window dot location dot reload that's how we're going to do it okay here i want to have the upload the upload image which is you can go from the list model and literally copy paste it and if you are like oh, okay how i can copy paste this function it's kind of long you can just make it like that copy it and here here it is nice and here I'm going to copy the notify function. We have written it several times. I seriously have no intention of writing it for, a, I don't know, six or seven time. And here's the notify. This is basically for notifying our user for a particular action. We have done that function several times right now. And here we are ready here with the functions. We just need to write the JSX. 
So let's go here dot classes dot wrapper and here h2 classes dot title is going to be edit property and then I'm going to give a form which is going to be here on submit which is going to be handle submit and here classes dot input wrapper is going to be label label come on label and here is going to be title with an html form of title below i'm going to have here an input which is going to have here a value of state question mark dot title then name is going to be title come on name is going to be title on change is going to be here handle change then type is going to be text and then id is going to be title and here I can just copy paste it several times because it's going to be almost the same. So here is going to be the whoops, come on. Here is going to be desk, here desk, which is short for the description again, desk, desk, and here desk, and here is going to be left as a text because it's a text. Then I'm again going to paste it, and here it's a price, 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 price. And here is going to be number and here is going to be price. Nice. Then again copy paste and then sq.meters. On the left here I'm going to have sq meters again. SQ meters. Name is going to be here sq meters. Type is going to be number and ID is going to be sq meters. Nice. Then I'm going to have here for the image. So here it's going to be classes.input wrapper image and here. You've probably know the logic. We have written the same logic in the list model component. So I have a label. Why here? That's three. So here label, and here is going to have a HTML for of image, and the text inside is going to be just upload image. Oops, come on. And below I'm going to have AI outline image like that. And here type text. Type is going to be file, not text, of course. Then ID is going to be image, like that. Style is going to be displaying none. You probably know the logic I told you already. Basically, I don't want to input to be seen, but when I click this, because of the HTML4, I'm going to be clicking this. Even though we don't see it, it's going to have the same behavior as clicking this, because of HTML4 and ID connection. And here I want to have on change, which is going to take an event. And here set photo is going to be e dot target dot files, and we get the first photo, which is you know we have only one photo. That's how it works in the file in the file type. Then again I'm going to have classes dot input wrapper, and then here it is going to be select, which is going to have here value is going to be state question mark dot country then on change is going to be here handle change then name country then id country class name is going to be classes dot country and here i'm oops my bad here i'm going to get the countries from the auto import as you see here just let me scroll up to see the, okay it's auto imported as you see and here countries.map and here I'm going to get a country and then it's going to be option. So here option value is going to be from the index. So here like that. And key is going to be from the country. And inside I'm going to place the country as a text. And here I can calmly copy paste it because here I'm going to have another select which is going to be. Uh, for the type, so here state dot type, 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 oops, and classes dot type, and here I can import the types as you see again here out imported when I click, and here type, type, type. You just change it everything to the type, and after the type here I'm going to have the submit button, but I know that I have one thing missing, so I can so go here above the input wrapper image this is for the phone number that we just added so here like that phone number and here phone number 
and here I'm just going to paste it here everywhere and here it's a type of a tail and here phone number nice and here below the was simple trapper I'm going to have here a button button with the classes dot list btn and here it is going to be list estate or actually edit estate is going to be much uh, better much descriptive of the action that we're doing and just below the form i want to have ai outline close icon come on and then class name is going to be classes dot close icon on click is going to be handle height edit model edit property and then i'm going to have a size of 25 nice whoops let me go back here and right now when i click on it ai outlaws ai outline close icon is not defined zero problem i'm just going to import it from here and right now ai out it is ai outline close whoops my bad here it is ai outline close without the icon on the end so here let me import it and let me remove that icon i'm not sure if such an icon exists it's ai outline close so when i click here right now you should pop up you see here it pops up but of course it's going to look much 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 different than what you see currently so right now it is our job to go here to the CSS and start typing so again i'm going to split the screen as you know guys how i do it and i'm going to start here dot container is going to be here background color is going to be rgba 0 0 0 0 0.6 then position is going to be fixed then overflow is going to be hidden then top is going to be zero left is going to be zero then height is 100 vh which is 100 vw display of flex justify content of center and align items of center then oops align items come on align items of center then dot wrapper is going to be here position of relative then width of 27.5 percent then height is going to be 85 percent border radius of 12 pixel padding of 2 rm background color is going to be white display of flex and flex direction is going to be column then dot wrapper and the title inside the dot wrapper text align is going to be center then margin bottom of 5 rm font size of 36 pixel and color is 333 and here as you see is going to is getting better and better so after the dot title here i'm going to target here a wrapper and the form inside which is going to have again position of relative width of 100 percent display of flex flex direction is going to be column align terms of center and gap of 1.75 irm then dot wrapper and here the dot input wrapper is going to be position of relative then i'm going to target the wrapper input wrapper and the input field inside which is going to have a border of none then border bottom of come on one pixel solid var slash slash second secondary orange then padding of 0 0.75 irm uh padding bottom of padding bottom of 0 0.25 irm so i want to reduce the padding bottom and outline is going to be none then I'm going to have dot wrapper enter label which is going to be position of absolute then color black and here left of 0.25 percent bottom of 1.5 percent and transition 150 millis 250 milliseconds off okay then I'm going to have dot wrapper input wrapper and here focus within label uh, position absolute then color is 777 left is going to be 0 irm bottom is 2 irm font size is going to be 12 pixel and here i want to listen to the music come on okay then after that dot wrapper and select is going to be i just want to show you how we are at okay so it's getting better and better nice okay let's continue uh width of width is 200 pixel then outline none uh text align text come on because here i didn't have a semicolon text align is going to be center 
font size of 18 pixel, padding of 0.5 IRM, background color is var, is var, sla, come on, var, var slash, slash, primary orange, then it is going to be color of white, border radius of 8 pixel, and margin right is 0.5 IRM. After that, I'm going to target the input wrapper image, which is going to have here position of relative, margin top of 2.5 IRM, margin right of 12.5 IRM, and wide space of no wrap. Then input wrapper image, and here the label inside is a display of flex, align terms of center and gap of 0.5 IRM, and font size of 18 pixel. Then dot, come on, then dot list btn, it is going to be here a cursor of pointer, then it is going to have here outline of none, border is one pixel solid transparent, padding is 0.75 IRM and 1.75 IRM and background color of var primary orange, color white, then font size of 20 pixel, border radius of 12 pixel, margin top of 1.25 IRM and transition of 150 milliseconds all is in, is in out. Then dot list btn and here hover background color white then color var slash slash primary orange and then border color is going to be var primary orange and lastly the close icon is position of absolute top is going to be 50 14 pixel right is going to be 8 pixel and lastly cursor cursor pointer. Nice, so right now we are ready with our CSS and we can try the edit functionality. So here I can type edited, here edited, price is going to be 3 to 1, 3 to 1. And let's see here like that. Let me change here to Norway, here to Mountain Viewer. And right now when I click on edit state, I'm going to be surprised if it's worked from the first time. Right now we are going to see here, do I have any error? I probably have, uh, Oops, let me try again to click edit estate. And here right now, as you see, it is edited and here everything works. But right now here, I know what is the problem. Why here we see three? Uh, because here, let me just close the CSS. We are ready with it. Here I've put a value instead of a country, I've put the index. And here the same applies to the type. So here I need to change it. And right now I am going to have no problems with editing. So here, come on, uh, let me make here Norway, family, and here one, two, three. Let's say here that picture. So right now when I click on edit state, it is going to be different. Okay, it's loading here. You see family home, here you see a new picture. Nice, we know it is working. Okay, and the next part here is to try the delete, which is very easy. I'm going to copy here the ID. I'm going to refresh here and prove to you that such an ID exists. So here, find, paste, and you see here we have one result. Okay, if the edit works, we are going to have zero results with that ID here. So right now, you see, instantly we are redirected. Uh, instantly we are redirected. And right now, if I refresh the MongoDB, we should see nothing. So right now, retrieving values from our database, find, and here, paste, and you see zero from zero results. So we know that the delete functionality works. And the delete functionality is kind of simple. So it's kind of hard to make a mistake there, as you know. Okay, and here we don't see here the type because those are properties that I have created previously and that's why we don't see the type. So ignore this, we know it is working, we have fixed that problem. And then the next part here is to make the search, the search model functional. So let us navigate here inside, whoops, here inside the search model. So here search model and we are going to start typing the logic. Okay, search model, not BTNs, but model like that. And here I, oh, actually we have written the functionality here. Let me try here. So minimum price, let's say $1 and maximum, let's say something like that. Okay, next big viewer, let's say family house and country Norway. Are we going to have any results? Ah, we have not created the search page. Okay, right now I thought about that, not the search model, but the search page. So right now we're going to create it here. 
just let me make here a search and here let's make a page.jsx rfc and here search.module.css and here import classes from dot slash and here search.module.css and here let me rename it here to search search like that let's first start with the jsx it's going to be very small the logic is bigger so here classes.container as you know then classes.wrapper then i'm going to have classes.titles div and here i have h2 with the class name here of title of main title my bad and here here are your desired properties then i have an h5 here which is going to be here classes.secondary title happy browsing then it is going to be classes dot properties and here i'm going to have filtered estates which right now i'm just going to ignore actually what i'm going to type here because right now we have not yet fetched the data and here i'm going to have a div which is going to be here with an on click of of callback function here which is going to be router dot push and here going to our home page and right now let me declare that router because right now we don't see it use a router and again fix it here again from now come on let me select that navigation okay right now we are not going to have any problem and here the class name is going to be classes dot go back and here i just want to have some icon because right now we have nothing so ai outline close and here i'm going to have span go back and here size is going to be 25 okay and here we are ready with that part let's start typing the logic it's not going to be that big so let's go const properties set properties is equal to use state an empty array then const filtered properties set filtered properties again an empty array so the logic will be following i'm going to fetch all of the states but i'm going to use the filtered states as something to show because those are going to contain all the properties but the filters are going to be changed depending on our needs then const is loading set is loading here you state like that const search params here we are going to get the parameters because we pass it here as a query parameters here it's from next navigation as you see after that here is that the router okay then use effect here is going to be like that and here const fetch properties is equal to async here a arrow function and a try catch so set is loading is going to be true then const response is equal to await fetch HTTP slash slash localhost 3000 slash API slash property then const data is equal to await response or JSON and set properties to the data and here console lock error and here set is loading is going to be here false and then I'm going to give another use effect which is going to be for the actual filtering so like that come on const filter pro come on filter properties is not going to be an async function we're not going to give any asynchronous operation and here if is loading is going to be equal to true this means that we have not yet fetched the data or s or properties question mark dot length is equal to zero then we return we don't do nothing we just return then const type country mean price and max price is going to be equal to qs dot parse and here search pa search params dot to string like that and here set filtered properties we take the previous property and here return properties dot filter property and then return so we're going to return the properties when they have the same type here so here is it property not a state but property then property dot country is going to be called to country 
then property dot price is going to be price come on equal equal to the price then property is going to be oops it's not going to be it's going to be here more than the mean price my bad we have a mean price not just an arbitrary price and here less than the max price so that's how we're going to do the filtering and here if the estates dot length is more than zero and then we're going to call the filter properties function and here i'm going to pass the estates as the dependency and here it's not estates why i'm writing estates here it's properties like that here and here inside the properties I'm going to type here filtered properties question mark dot map property and here I'm going to do make an instant return and here get the property card like that and here he is going to be property question mark dot underscore id and here property property so we know it's going to work let me check here inside our db we're importing ah I forgot to uh, import to write here the use client directive because we're going because we're using states and stuff and here i need to instantly call the fetch properties those are the, the things that we need to change right now i see it so fetch properties like that nice okay and here qs not defined oh i have not imported the qs i just i make very silly mistakes but it's normal everyone does the, does them in development so here qs from query string query slash string and here we don't have any type that's why we don't see anything let me go here to check if we have a type uh or we're going to create one right right now, right now so here the title we don't care about the title we don't care either with the description let's make the price let's say to 1000 just for development purposes square meters like that bits like that phone number like that upload image is going to be let's say of that burger so you remember it norway and here family home so remember here is going to be Norway family home and the price is going to be $1,000 so right now list estate is going to be listed here why well, I'm not redirected to the new page ah okay I'm redirected it just took some time okay and I want to see the image okay you see that burger oh, okay here click to search minimum price $1 maximum price $999 so it is $999 next is going to be family home is going to be Norway and right now when i refresh here why i don't see anything let me console log here so here console log type country mean price max price let me see right now so one 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 nine 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 hmm. so because it's getting the country and the type as an index because that's how it works in the list model is it because of that it is let me check here where is the list model i know i don't know why i have mixed those things here so value is getting a country and the type is getting in the type is getting the type as a value that's interesting here guys the fix is very simple right now let me again click to search the minimum price would be one dollar the maximum price is 101 dollar next here family home then norway and here let me click on search right now we don't see anything because right now i'm going to show you here the type is not uh, family home but it is one and the country here is not norway but it is one why because it is kind of not beautiful to put the strings directly here into the query parameters it is just my own convention and i have seen a lot of people do it as well so right now we just want to get the index and it's super easy i'm going to show you so here const country index is going to be equal to so we get the countries array dot map and here country and here if the country is equal to the property dot country this means that we are going to get the index and here it is not map but find the find index of course that method and the same here is going to be applied for the type so type index is equal to types dot find index type and here type is equal to property come on property dot type and right now we are going to put it here and remember those type and country that we have on the right side of the equation is the query parameters that we are getting from here if you feel confused just watch the code again 
And here I forgot to put the dot price here for that property here, that last line of the return. And right now, when I refresh here, we should see something. And right now, there is a once problem that I forgot to tell you. Here we need to convert everything here to a number. Because query string, you know, which is in the name, query string, I can repeat, string. So here we need to convert those, everything here, we need to convert it as a number, like that. And right now, you see, here we see our uh, our uh, property, even though it's a photo of a burger, we see it, that it pops up. Okay, the next part is writing the CSS here, we are ready with the logic, that was it. And let me just like, do it like that, okay. So, dot container is going to be here, margin top of 7.5 IRM, then height is going to be calc 100 VH minus 60 pixel, then width of 100%, then dot wrapper is going to be height 100%, then width is 75%, margin 0, auto, then display of flex, flex direction is going to be common, dot titles is going to be here margin left of minus 1.25 IRM, display of flex, flex direction is going to be column, uh, gap of 1.5 IRM. Then, so here we, we don't see right now the title because it we need to change here the color. So we're going to do it right now. So titles in here dot main title is going to be color var primary orange. Then font size is 30, 36 pixel. Then we're going to target the other title, the secondary title. In here, secondary title. Color is secondary. Come on, sec secondary orange. And here, font size of 24 pixel. Then I'm going to target the dot properties. It is going to be margin top of five IRM display of grid. Then grid template columns. Repeat three. And here one are uh, one fraction. Then uh, row gap is going to be. 5 IRM. So we can see how it's looking. Okay, it looks great. And lastly here I want to target the go back, which is this here for going back. And I got a comment here before I write the style that my accent is funny. I know guys, I'm Bulgarian and I know that my accent is funny and I love it. Okay, let's continue. Uh, display of flex, align tabs of center, gap of 0 0.5 IRM, position absolute, then top of 6 IRM, left 1.5 IRM, and color is going to be white. So right now, here we are going to see it, here go back. And here, instead of AI outline calls, can I just make an arrow? Here, I think arrow is going to be more suitable. AI, AI outline left arrow, just like that. And here, AI outline left, arrow left, it's arrow left, my bad. So here, arrow left, like that. And here, we are going to see, and here, when I click on go back, here we are back. Oops, I want to click on this one. So the this burger here, and let me change here the picture. So here, upload. Let me change to, uh, to a picture that is not of a food because right now the application is not uh, of a food team. And right now it's loading and you see here. And I want to make one last thing here for our application. This is literally the last thing that I want to do, which is, let me go here and I'm going to tell you just in a second here into the details page, here that page where we are at. Let me close everything here. And here, I want to make a condition. So here, if we are owner, we have already started that condition. So if here, if we are owner, here we do that. But if you are not an owner, I want to display the phone number. This is our main part of the application. So to contact the person with the property. And here is going to be a span with the property question mark dot phone number. Nice. And here I want to make that condition uh, the opposite logic just to see what is going to pop up here. Okay, I'm going to make it if it's going to be equal to false like that, so we don't get an error. And right now we see we see it, but it's a with a black color, so I need to style it a little bit. So here class name is going to be classes dot phone number. And right now let me go here to the CSS of the details. And here, let where to paste it. I think it should be appropriate below the controls and above the country. It is going to be color of var var primary orange, font size of 22 pixel, like that. And here, font weight of both. And here, of course, I'm going to put a plus sign. It's a convention here. 
So a plus sign. So this is the phone number if we're not an owner, but I'm going to make the condition as it should be. Okay. And guys, I, I would appreciate if you subscribe and like my video and see you next time. Bye.